Few institutions have endured as well or as long as the Galactic. Stay away from the sixth circle unless you are alive. Used to think I was Vanguard material. Until I discovered the free control of them. Welcome to Sidonia Security. I'm Commander Vincent Woodard. Chief of Planetary Security and former head of the Red Devils program here on Mars. I tend to deal with security at a high governmental level, whereas my associate Booth over there handles day-to-day -day security issues. So if you're looking to report a minor crime or misdemeanor, see him. But if there's something I can help you with, feel free to ask. That's a pretty serious accusation. I assume you have proof of these alleged illicit activities? Hmm. Let me take a look at that. Well, this doesn't look good for Hearst. I'll say that. You did the right thing by coming to me. I'll take it from here. The United Colonies thanks you for your vigilance. Tell you what, I'll do you a favor. Go ahead and finish whatever deal you had with Hearst. I'll wait to take care of him until after that. Just don't let him know we spoke about this. I don't want him running, and you don't want to lose whatever leverage you've got with him. I can tell you, Sidoni appreciates it. You look hurt. Might want to head on over to Reliance. I sure hope you've taken care of our little, uh, problem. Did you, uh, take care of my little problem? Good. I'll release Mr. Brennan's shipment to you as promised. I'll even defer his taxes as a little bonus. You really helped me out of this bind. Don't take this the wrong way, but I hope I'm never in need of your help like this again. Center on P1 is a good place to connect with others. Mining must be a fun job, or else why would we keep getting so many applicants? My shipment. Do you have it yet? Ah, yes. I'll take that. Now, um, I've probably got some important messages I need you to take care of for me while I, uh, um, attend to some other important matters at hand. You'll need my password. Remember, if you reply to anything, try to mimic my style and speech patterns. You know, for consistency. Have a good one. I hope I didn't make a mistake. I saw. <laughs> Good work. See? I knew having someone on the inside like that would work out. I've already put it in order for the equipment. I was going to ask you to pick it up for me, but there's a problem. One of my guys, Hank Ferraro, offered to go. I tried to tell him he'd be more useful sticking to his job here, but he insisted, and he was already on his way out before I could stop him. But it shouldn't be taking this long. Just a quick trip to Gagarin and back. I'm concerned. I could use some help with this. Oh, thanks. This is a huge help. You'll be happy to know I actually carved out some of the budget so I can pay you for all of your assistance. We don't currently have much information to go on. I'd suggest checking with Sidonia ship services over at the starport first. 
They'd be the last person I know that's seen Hank. It's all I've got without sending you all the way to Gagarin to retrace his steps. Good luck. Crime's at an all-time low around Sedona. If you need a little, you know, touch up, I'm happy to help. Goodbye. I keep telling myself next year it's back. To hmm. Well, let's see what's wrong with you. Oh, not good. Not good at all. You're gonna need a lot of care. Okay, I'll get you patched up quicker than you can say Bob's your uncle. Well, there's no sense in downplaying it. This'll sting, but it'll make you feel better. Here we go. All right. You're good to go. Now stay safe out there. Stay healthy. Nothing bad happens today. You should need some work done. Okay. A ship and departed. Actually, it looks like he came back into Mars space recently, but he didn't land here at the spaceport. The ship diverted and landed outside the city a ways. Yeah, something seems off about this. You're probably right that you need to work this out with your boss. Maybe some wires got crossed. Anyway, good luck and good day to you. Say anything? No. I hope I didn't make. I wonder what's taking Hank so long. Mm, that's a little suspicious. Why would he do that? Moreover, why wouldn't he return with the goods? Something's definitely up. I asked around while you were gone. Some of his co workers mentioned there's been a little extra. well. Hank lately. In particular, he was cursing up a storm about work and about his co-workers. Said some things that make me think his intentions here were not pure. 
Anyway, he's not too bright. Maybe he's still here in Sidonia. Check the Broken Spear. He frequently goes there to drink. We need to get to the bottom of this. Remember, it's most important that we find out where the equipment is. We can always deal with Hank later. We've got to do it before we lose track of it, before it gets sold, moved, or worse. And we've got to hope to whatever higher power you believe in that it wasn't jettisoned into space. We've got our work cut out for us. Good luck. Mars is wrapped with resources and chains. Man, it's not only a blue. Questions, huh? Let me buy you a beer first. Suit yourself? Uh, anyway, I seen you talking to Trevor. What's someone like you doing sticking your nose where it doesn't belong? You're right. I didn't want to bring it back, so I took it. I had to. Those guys all think I'm some kind of joke. And I'm stuck with this stupid three-year contract. I can't afford to break it. So, screw Deimos, screw Trevor and all the other miners. Losing that equipment's the last draw for them. Did he tell you that? One last failure in a string of failures to meet quotas. It'll be layoffs for everyone, and I won't owe Deimos a damn credit. Hmm. Oh, shit. You could turn me in. I'd be in jail, and then this be all for nothing. Damn it. Fine. You got me. I'll take you to where I stashed it, and we can haul it back. But you better not be lying to me about not telling anyone. Relax, hotshot. I ain't gonna shoot you in the back, if that's what you're worried about. Just, uh, follow me. We're going outside. That's enough. Now face me, so I don't have to shoot you in the back. No, we got a problem we can't resolve. Name well, when you say it like that, maybe you got a point. Do they? Oh, maybe I need to rethink what I'm doing. God damn it. You're right. What the hell am I doing? This is freaking stupid, even for me. 
this whole idea. I, I barely thought it through. I, I just acted because it seemed like my only shot. I really don't want to hurt anyone. I'm in too deep and I don't know what to do. I know I don't deserve it, but will you help me? Please? Hey, I, I like how you think. You'd really do that for me? I mean, as long as they get the equipment back, no harm, no fell, right? And if they think I got it back for them, then maybe I'll finally get the respect I deserve! Yeah, 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 I'm down for this. Let, let's do it. I'm looking forward to hearing all about this. Oh, do tell. What took him so long? Wow, is that true, Hank? Sounds like you really gave it to him, eh? Well, good on you then. Oh yeah. Well, I really just wanted to prove myself, you know? Take initiative and stuff. So, I went early to go pick it up. But when I returned to Mars, I noticed that pirates were following me. I diverted from the spaceport and led them into the desert, where I fought them off and drove them away. Oh, it was wild, man. Turns out I had you all wrong, Hank. You'll have to tell me all about it later. Let's allow our friend here to get going, though. I'll take it from here and get the equipment sorted out. Here's the credits I promised. I'm also throwing in some ore to repay you for what you got us before, and then some. We'll be able to recoup it in no time with these new tools. Thanks for all your help. We couldn't have done it without you. It takes guts, character, to be a miner out here. Citizens are advised to take caution near the military outpost on the city's outskirts. <laughs> <due to frequent laughs> Just with you. Yeah, yeah, I know. You helped save me from myself. I thought everyone was going to start treating me with more respect. But that hasn't exactly happened. Yeah, you're right. Who cares what they think? I may not stick around when my contract's done anyway. So who cares, right? What? It is also advised to use only approved ship landing pads, as the UC Marine... You know, I believe we've got the best mining team. Since you helped us out with the equipment and all, I was wondering if I could talk to you. <coughs> it's... it's probably... <coughs> not, but... I can't afford to go get it looked at. <coughs> it's not a matter of money. There's more to it than that. Actually, maybe this is wrong. You're a total stranger. Forget I said anything. Thanks, I'll try it, but I really should see an actual doctor. It's clear you want to help. Maybe I can trust you. See, I'd like to go to Reliant Medical for treatment, but my father, Nathan, is an executive with Reliant. I came to Sidonia to escape him. Nathan is not a good man. Not to me. And I did something terrible to him, so now he is searching far and wide for me. He has connections with doctors throughout the settled systems. I don't know which ones I can trust, and it won't end well for me if they snitch to him. <coughs> Trust 
Trevor tells me you're skilled in dealing with people. Maybe you could try to reason with my father, or maybe scare him into backing off. But you should know. He has powerful and dangerous friends, so you must be careful. If it works, I'll be free. If not, well, at, at least he still won't know where to find me. <coughs> what do you think? It just so happens there's a conference he goes to on Neon around this time of year. He always stays at Hotel Volai. He won't see visitors he doesn't know, but maybe he'll talk if you tell him you're there on my behalf. It's risky, but maybe he'll listen if he knows you mean him no harm. I've got it. Bring him a bottle of his favorite whiskey, Red Harvest Reserve. Say it's... <coughs> Say it's a peace offering from me. That whiskey is exceedingly rare. I'm sure it will pique his interest enough to hear what you have to say. Good luck. You can check with Jack at the Broken Spear for the whiskey. He may have some or... <coughs> ...know where to get it. And thank you so much for trying to help me. Subterranean particle detonation imminent. Be advised to secure loose articles and find stable ground or remain seated in the event of unforeseen tremors. Detonation occurs in five, so glad they're four, the drink three, two, one. Don't want to it catch yourself with a loose grip on your equipment when one of those particle detonations goes off. The new equipment is great. I finally feel like I'm working at full speed. here for over 40 years. Few places. I am, but you don't look like the type that could afford it. The last person that came through here asking about it was none other than Governor Hurst. Didn't even want to drink it. Said he was buying it to put it on display in his office or something. Seems like a waste, but well, whatever. He paid up. Now you got my attention. This ought to be good. I do have a soft spot for that girl. Tell you what, I'll do this as a favor for Rivka. She's been through a lot. I'll only charge you what I paid for the whiskey years ago. Pay me that, and it's yours. I sure hope you're not pulling my leg about this whole thing, or else I just let all that money slip away. You better do justice for Rivka. Maybe a lot more used to today. Oh, how nice. His daughter must be feeling very generous to be sending him something like that. Mr. Ovadia is in his room on the third floor. 
I'll buzz him and let him know you're on your way. Well, let's make this quick. <laughs> of course it was. Ah, I should have not been so blind. You have no idea what you're doing. You need to tell me where she is this instant. My own daughter assaults me in my own home, steals my personal spacecraft, then runs off to who knows where. Now you think a friendly little chat is going to smooth it all over and make things better? How foolish do you think I am? Hmm. My daughter knows me well. Maybe she is serious about this. Hate? No, of course not. But she mustn't be lawless. She would really put her own life at risk due to me. She puts me in a difficult position. She needs to face consequences. Yet, I do not wish her to die. You think wrong. Sorry, but I stand firm in my decision. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be calling security to deal with you. Unless, if you tell me where she is hiding, I will agree to let you go scot-free. No security. All charges against you will be dropped. I assure you, they are already on their way. I suggest you leave before things get messy. Neon security. You're coming with us. I just heard news that my father was found dead in his hotel room. I <coughs> assume that was your doing. I don't know what to say. I'm safe, but at what cost? I hated that man, but I never wished him dead. I guess I thought it went without saying, but at the same time, Maybe I secretly wished it. It's not that I'm not grateful. I don't know, this is a lot to take in. <coughs> I guess we will never know if that is true or not. It is both fortunate and unfortunate, but... That bourbon is for me to live with now. I suppose I should thank you. 
even though it feels wrong to do so. He was my father, and yet I still feel relief. It will always weigh heavy on my soul. <coughs> I don't know what else to say. Goodbye.
I'm a man of action. I've got no use for lies. So when I tell you that you're being manipulated, you know I'm telling the truth. You think the Council of Governors really cares about anything but themselves? They're greedy and corrupt. You're a tool in the hands of the unworthy, just like I once was. I was loyal. I followed orders, and I led good men and women to their deaths. I'll carry the stain of that dishonor to my grave. Cavalry was the greatest fighting force the Freestar Collective has ever seen. At the Battle of Nera, the 1st Cavalry was destroyed. Why? Because the generals got scared and asked for a truce. I've got no sympathy for cowards, or for the people who put them in power. I've also got no sympathy for those.
someone there? Come here seeking justice. Well, what about justice for my soldiers? You just took on some of the best mercenaries in the Freestar Collective and cut right through them. 
<clears throat> if we'd have had more like you in the war, we could have planted our flag in New Atlantis. You fought because you had to, and you fought well. Don't apologize for that. More importantly, you survived. Most soldiers don't. I know, because I'm the one who led them to their death. You don't know what it's like to look around and see the faces of warriors who trusted you to lead them as they die screaming. I watched brave men and women torn limb from limb by monsters. I saw mech pilots cooked alive in their cockpits as their machines burned. <clears throat> Those deaths didn't have to be meaningless, but spineless leaders gave up on us even when victory was within our grasp. You really want to know? Because you might not like the answer. Last chance, deputy. You can walk away right now and remain blissfully ignorant, thinking you fight for a noble cause. But if you still want the truth, <laughs> I'll shatter that illusion for you right now. <laughs> we'll see about that. Not long after I started the first, I was contacted by a man who said he represented someone wealthy and influential. <laughs> I refused to work for a shadow client, so he agreed to set up a meeting. Imagine my surprise when Ron Hope showed up. He offered me a lucrative contract to take possession of certain farms throughout Freestar Space. The credits were good, but yeah, getting some payback was the real reward. Don't bother. I'm gonna make this easy for you, deputy. I'm gonna die the way I lived. Weapon in hand, no compromise, no fear. But first, here, take this. Use it to cut out the weakness rotting at the heart of the Freestar Collective. When the next war comes, <laughs> and it will come, the Collective needs to be strong. Now my unit's waiting for me, and I'm gonna report for duty one last time. Goodbye, Deputy.
I don't want to hear any complaints. Ron hopes the best thing that's happened. Keep an eye on your valuables. If you can't protect your generous, Mr. Hope. It's well earned, Burkett. But we'd be dust. We said some back. ambitious. Good to see you again. Well, I've just received a report from the Marshal about your progress. He said you had a promising lead on the mercenaries who stole my ship. I trust you're here with good news? Of course. What have you learned? The same Paxton Hull who was court-martialed during the Colony War? Well, I've, I've never met the man, and, and I can't imagine why he'd make an accusation against me. I see. <laughs> I'm impressed, Deputy. It's clear you have a bright future. What's going on? What is this about, Mr. Hope? Nothing that concerns you, Birgit. In fact, why don't you make yourself scarce? I think I'd like to hear what the deputy has to say. Ah, the cards are on the table. So why not? The truth is, we've been falling behind the competition. <laughs> Significantly so. We needed solutions. A few years ago, I began to diversify. We started to research chemicals, fuel, those sort of things. We developed an experimental fertilizer. Oh. <laughs> and it failed utterly. It wiped out entire crops. I was prepared to write the whole thing off. When we made a discovery that changed, Everything. Turns out, our fertilizer was transforming the soil, bolstering its mineral content tenfold. Mining is expensive, and so is the cost of raw materials. My mineral enriching fertilizer solves several problems at once. The farmers provide free manual labor. And once the land is ready, we move in to extract and process the soil. Look, I'll level with you. We're falling behind the competition. The hardworking people of this town depend on me for their livelihoods, and I won't let them down. Cutting my costs means saving their jobs. I can't believe what I'm hearing. How could you do something so, so awful to innocent people, to families? Not another word out of you, Birgit. I can take your job and more. We'll discuss this later. In any case, I suppose the gig is up. I give you my word that I'll call off the operation and return the land to its rightful owners. Y 
You're right. Of course. Something must be done. I'll set up a fund to handle funeral expenses and take care of any surviving family members. We'll do this the right way. I give you my word. You're right. Yeah, Those families deserve to be compensated for the uh, inconvenience. Hmm, well, uh, perhaps a discount on their next purchase from Hope Tech. With that resolved, let's talk about you. As a member of the Council of Governors, I'm authorized to award you a substantial bonus. And of course, we'll both agree to forget about my little cost-cutting endeavor. Well, let's not be too hasty, Deputy. There's something else you need to consider. I'll do what's necessary to protect my company and my employees. If you tell anyone about this, you're risking their livelihoods. Do you really want to put all these people out of work and make their families suffer? I'm afraid there's no avoiding it. The past can't be changed. But the future is very much in your hands, Deputy. You put me away, and this company will fall apart. You have destroyed far more lives than I did. I'll make myself very plain. I won't let you jeopardize my reputation. This company, or the people who work for me. If that means you suffer an unfortunate incident at the hands of my security personnel, so be it. I'm important. You're nothing. You're not actually threatening to attack a Freestar Ranger, are you? You just... Threatened a member of the Council of Governors. On my authority, you're stripped of rank. Declared an outlaw. Guards! Dispose of this criminal. to have you killed I don't understand mr. hope always seemed like such a good person but everything he said about the farmers and hiring those mercenaries it was so awful the first part is true he always looked out for us for his employees I know what I just heard and saw, but he was a friend. No, he was more like a father. And now he's you, you killed him. Nobody should ever want that, especially when it means killing someone who meant so much to so many people. What happens to us now? That's... That would be... Elana. Elana Nwankwo. She seems pretty capable. 
maybe... Maybe we'll be okay after all. I guess we'll have to figure things out. Find a path forward. Back. Good to see you back safe, deputy. What's the word on the mech factory? Were the mercenaries hiding out there? Damn, you've got guts of steel. Did you find out why the first was taking over farms? What? Ron Hope? That's one hell of an accusation, deputy. Are you really that surprised? Hope's always had a reputation as a man who'd do anything but succeed. He's on the damn council, Emma. So he can make laws favorable to his business interests. Sure, he's known to look after his people, but do you really think he gives a damn about some farmers on Montara Luna? Did Hope explain his motives at all? That has a familiar ring to it. I recall hearing about some Hope Tech initiative to help farmers. At the time, I just figured it was a PR stunt. Seems a little more sinister now. Please, tell me you've got some evidence to back up these extraordinary claims. All right, let's see what you've got. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, this is pretty damning. Especially this last bit about destroying the slate. And you confronted Hope about this? Sounds like his pride got the best of him. Damn. This is going to send shockwaves throughout the Free Star Collective. The people can't trust their leaders. Anarchy could follow. Have a little faith, Daniel. We're not the United Colony. One bad apple won't spoil the whole damn barrel. Easy for you to say. You ain't the Marshal. Not yet, but you ain't gonna live forever, old man. While we've got you here, there's one last piece of business to take care of. Emma, would you please? With pleasure, Marshal. When you first joined us, I told you that you'd undergo an evaluation process. There's one thing left to do. A simple question. Do you feel ready to wear the badge of a full-fledged Freestar Ranger? Good. Duty and honor are the backbone of the Freestar Rangers. Marshal, I approve the deputy for advancement to the rank of Ranger. Thank you, Ranger Wilcox. In your time serving as a deputy, you've shown exceptional courage, fearless tenacity, and a high regard for the safety of our citizens. By the authority granted to me by the Council of Governors, I hereby promote you to the rank of Ranger. Here's your badge. Wear it with pride. But don't forget the solemn responsibility it represents. I know you will. Let's hear it for our new ranger. Woo! Right. Great job, ranger! Got to admit, I'm impressed how fast you made this.
Hi. If you find any more of the co- Let me see. Hmm. Oh, I know what this is. This is Solomon's manifest from his first trip to Cheyenne. Every single thing he thought he might need. Wow. When I asked you to find Solomon Coe's trove, honestly, I didn't expect anything. But somehow, by some miracle, I think you found them all. Future generations owe you a great debt. As do I. The museum is always open to you. Vasco, I asked you to remind me about something. What was it? Our journey Next seems to be coming to an end. Let's get a second for a opinion. Ah, uh, it'll be a... Walter and I were just discussing the experience. No, I... It seems that, as well as... Sam. Well... I'll be taking up the... I can't Not my first time. Walter. Sarah, uh, don't know. Well... Never regretted coming. Out. The eyes showing most suggest, but occasionally it's not. This is the one way I can best contribute to our work. What did I say before that one? It had. You said remember to check on the experiment. The one that might explode. We're going to get to the bottom of what happened at the spaceport.
Welcome aboard the UC Vigilance. Did you have any questions before I escort you to the Commander? Understood? If you'd follow me, please. So, you're the vanguard that took down that Terramorph on Tau City. You've made quite an impression around here. Everyone upstairs is talking about it. Damn. That must have been one hell of a firefight. I almost regret missing out on all the fun. Of course, we don't normally see that kind of action on the Vigilance, but we have our moments. All right, Vanguard. Take the lift up to Ops. Commander Akande should be waiting for you. Good luck. There you are. Commander Kibwe Kande, UC Sistev. Glad to have you aboard. I was beginning to think you were having second thoughts about Commander Duala's offer. Excellent. Then let's get right to it, shall we? This is the operation center of the UC Vigilance. Sistev's nerve center dedicated to the destruction of the Crimson Fleet. Which is precisely why we're taking a more clandestine approach. We need eyes and ears inside the Crimson Fleet. Someone who can feed us information, evidence, and expose their weaknesses. The catch is that you can't just knock on their front door and ask for an application. Getting inside is going to take some finesse. Good. I have just the right place for you to start. Our intelligence has managed to find a possible opening into the Crimson Fleet through Sersha Bowden, one of their contacts. She works for the Trade Authority in Sidonia, so you'll be using a container of Aurora we've loaded on your ship to get her attention. You'd better hope so. Sersha won't be easy to dupe. Once you bluff your way into the Crimson Fleet, then the operation proceeds to evidence gathering. That's where my second in command, Lieutenant Gillian Toft, comes into the picture. She'll explain everything you need to know. Eager to get going? Good. Remember, this entire operation rests on your ability to infiltrate the Crimson Fleet and bring us the evidence we need to take them down. I wouldn't expect any less. Look, before you begin, I want to make something perfectly clear. As an undercover operative for UC Sysdev, you'll be expected to follow our code of conduct and ethics. Allow yourself to stray too far off the path, and you stand a good chance of spiraling out of control. That's what I wanted to hear. Anyway, it's time to hand you over to Lieutenant Toft. She'll brief you about the details of the evidence gathering portion of the operation. Now, get out of here, and good luck. You have your orders. Pardon. All right, we don't have a lot of time, so I need you to listen up. While you're working undercover, it's imperative that you gather as much evidence as possible. If you find any records that look suspicious or incriminating, you bring it to me. Is that understood? Well, you better. Commander Akande's entire operation is resting on your shoulders. I want data slates, computer downloads, handwritten notes. Hell, I'll take anything if it'll get those bastards thrown into the brig. For the sake of the settled systems, I hope you're right. That minor skirmish you had with them on Bactera was nothing compared to the death and destruction those pirates leave behind. If you've seen what I've seen, you'd understand why I'm pushing you so hard. Yes, of course. I'm sorry if I brought up any painful memories. Oh, uh, one last thing. A bit of good news, actually. Commander Akande has authorized a credit disbursement for each piece of evidence that you return as compensation for your efforts. It's not generous, it's motivational. Commander Akande's idea. All right, 
We've loaded a container of Aurora into your ship's cargo hold. We're also providing you with a sample you can use to tease the goods. We've cleared your ship for launch. Proceed to Sidonia. Make contact with Searsha Bowden. And with any luck, she'll point you to the Crimson Fleet. That should do it. You're dismissed. We'll be here if you need us. Hey. Hello. If you're here to buy or sell, you might want to talk to Octai. I'm busy. Hm. Wouldn't be the first time I've heard that line. Oh, don't give me that look. I'm just having a laugh. What have you got for me? Hmm. Aurora, huh? Nice. A little too hot to handle, though. What else you got? All I'm going to point at is the ceiling, with my middle finger. Get that stuff out of here before UC security catches on. Of course, if there's a finder's fee you're offering, I might, well, bend the rules a little bit. You know, it's funny. Suddenly, I do remember someone who might be able to unload that stuff for you. There's a buddy of mine who runs with the Crimson Fleet. Goes by the name Adler Kemp. If he isn't passed out, you can find him killing the rest of his brain cells at the Broken Spear. Oh, and, uh, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. I can't believe Darius is a psychologist on stuff. Ava! Sit down. Ava! Unless you're here to serve me another drink, you can turn around and walk away. Oh, yeah? Well, I don't know who the hell you are. So what makes you think I'm going to help you out? Hey, why don't you say that a little louder? I don't think every single UC guard in Sedonia heard you! Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I think we can help you with this. If you've got a whole shipment of this stuff, you're going to need to move it fast. But you're going to have to do something for us first. Right down to business! And no small talk. I like it. Now listen up, because I'm not going to repeat myself. I need you to deal with a miner who's racked up a bunch of debt. He probably spent it all on booze, not that I blamed him. Either way, I want that money back. Perfect. His name's Carl Fielding. I think you'll find him wandering around the Deimos Miners' quarters. Don't worry, you can't miss him. Just look for the most miserable-looking guy in the entire place.
have a pen pal in New Atlantis. We've never met them. Something I can help you with? Hey, slow down. I don't even know what you're talking about. What? Play what games? You're obviously confusing me with someone else. Look, I'm tired. It's been a long day in the mines. I just want to go home Wash off the dust and relax. This has been fun, though. Whatever. Uh, hey, hey, now. <laughs> Take it easy there. Let me think about that person you mentioned. Uh, Adler, was it? Hmm? Oh, wait. You mean that Adler? Yeah. Sorry, I thought you were talking about someone else. <laughs> I told him I'd pay up next week when Deimos cuts our next profit share check. <laughs> I'll even bring it to him personally. Hmm? Sound good? Yeah? Come on! Give me a break! What the... Look. I haven't got a single credit to spare right now, okay? You can't squeeze blood from a stone. You know? Right? Oh, what games? Why are you doing this to me? I don't have the money. What? Oh my god. He might come after them? Because of me? I hadn't even thought of the possibility. Please, tell Adler I'm sorry for trying to wiggle out of the debt. I didn't have much of a choice. This is the evening, Governor. can get pretty glum around here. Have something for me? She's there, would you look at that. I knew that bum was holding out on me. He going to be a problem anymore? Or did he get the message? Nice, nice. You're kind of a natural at this. Leaning on deadbeats comes easy to you. I like that. You know, if you like this kind of work, I can get you more. A lot more. You think you can handle running with my, uh, associates? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I like your style. All right. I'll call ahead and get a hold of Neva Mora. She's second to the big boss himself. Head out to Europa. You'll find her there. I suggest you listen to whatever she has to say. Oh. And I've taken care of that Aurora shipment for you, too. Don't spend all that cash in one place. No, really, that's how you pronounce it. I didn't think it was. I wish there were more kids like me around. Grown-ups are always so grumpy. Hi, I'm Renee, and I'm so bored. My mom and dad said not to talk to people I don't know, so I thought maybe I could talk to you, and then I know you, and I won't be so bored. <sighs> See, now we're friends, and my peer 
just can't say I'm not allowed to talk to you. Anyway, what do you want to talk about? I like to play with Taiye sometimes. We come up with lots of games to play. Sometimes we listen to music or watch shows. But when he's not around, I like to draw. Sometimes I draw things and give them to people since they're so mopey all the time. It makes them smile. Actually, wanna help me? I just drew these great pictures of Space Frog, but I can't go out right now. Can you help put them up for me? You will? Thank you, thank you, thank you! People are gonna be so happy. Here's a bunch of copies of the Space Frog drawing I made. You can post them in places where you think people will see them. Thank you so much! Watch out for the robots. They're surprisingly sneaky. Just because the governor's office is right out there on the main level. Tracker, I know you don't need it, but there's some work available on the mission boards. Can't believe we're still pulling up huge work. Never forget, there's nothing. I just know people are going to... Hi, thanks for doing that for me. I wish I could do it myself, but having a friendly adult help me is almost as good. I know, right? Last time I did this, lots of people came over to tell me how much they loved it. I only hope these drawings stay up longer this time. Anyways, it's not much, but I got a little something for you as a thank you. It is now safe. Wow, look who finally had the guts to shoot them. Big shot. I hear Adela thinks you're good enough to join our crew. We'll see. When the waters get deep, it's sink or swim. So, before I put you to work, let's get everything out in the open. I don't know if Adler mentioned it, and for his sake, I hope he hasn't. But you aren't about to sign up with any average pirate crew. You're signing up with the Crimson Fleet. That's if you get through this little task I have planned for you. There's a medical supply ship called the Rigana, jumping into Enceladus's orbit. On board that ship, you'll find a traitor named Austin Rake. I want him dead. It's done when Rake stops breathing. Head back here when you're finished. And don't keep me waiting for long. Please confirm your 
safer for us that way. All right, you can dock. We will talk then. I am not sure what to make of you being here. If you wanted to kill us, you could have done that from your ship. If you wanted our cargo, we could have jettisoned it. I guess I should just stop talking and let you say your piece. That is true. Which means you don't want somebody to know what you are really up to. Now, do you mind telling us what this is all about? You really do not know which one of us is Rake, do you? And you do not seem to care either, which makes me think you really want to save him. Okay, I have idea. We can strike his name from Manifest, make it so he was never on board. Then, when we dock, we will leave him on this ship and deliver him to another port. That is fair. We do not want any part of the fleet. Is that all right with you, Austin? Do I have a choice? It does not appear you do. Well then, it is agreed. You go back to your ship and we will make sure Rake was never on ours. And in case any of your handlers get suspicious, here. We had an extra crate of supplies loaded, in case one got damaged. This should be proof you were not here to bargain. Thank you for letting us go.
Commander Ikande wants to see you. Lieutenant Toft is as organized as they come. You can be sure she'll be working as hard. Go back. Anything to report? We got the message from the Regana about Austin Rick. We had him dropped off at a separate port, off the books. Suffice to say, he's got a lot to answer for. That's a smart line to follow. Part of this role you're playing means having to make hard choices. Just remember not to lose yourself in the part. Oh, one more thing before we move on. For transparency's sake, you should know we were the ones that hired Ecliptic to attack Neva's ship. There was concern after what happened with the Regana that you might have trouble earning Neva's trust. Coming to her rescue ensured that would not be a problem. But a gamble that hopefully paid off. On that note, how did things go with Neva? Were you able to join the fleet? Then it worked. You're in. Sounds like everything is going as expected. Now it's time for the next phase of the mission. Our intel on Searsha was correct. After we received reports on your interaction with Adler Kemp, we picked up on your rendezvous with Neva Mora. Our files indicate she's second in command, so getting on a good side will ensure you get into the Crimson Fleet. Yes, you pass your first test and you're still alive. But before we get too confident, that either means she suspects nothing, or she intends to make an example of you later. Just remember, these are ruthless criminals, so don't let your guard down. And their ruthlessness is only surpassed by their cunning. You should proceed with caution, regardless of how well you think you've ingratiated yourself. So what's next for you on Neva's agenda? Where you'll meet Delgado, no doubt. Delgado is the leader of the Crimson Fleet. I have a profile here with some information on his background. You'll want to know the individual cadences of every member of the fleet, but Delgado's most of all. In any case, now that you're with the fleet, You'll be operating independently. We will shadow you eventually, but we'll need to maintain our distance for now, especially while you're on the key. This will also give us time to bolster our defenses, should we need to engage with the fleet in the future. Sir, on that note, shall we begin implementing the upgrade to our shields? Immediately, Lieutenant. Notify the engineers and relay the information to the crew. I hope your entry into the fleet has overcome any doubts you may have had regarding your mission. It certainly increased my estimates on success. Keep up the good work. We'll expect further reports. Dismissed. Thanks, sir. We don't have a full map of the... Well done. Let's see what you found. Interesting. Looks like he's been meeting up regularly with Neva Mora to transfer goods and cash from Sidonia. Which means the Crimson Fleet's just lost one of their drop points. <laughs> that should set them back a bit. Any other fragments? Understood. Keep searching and you're bound to find more. Good luck on the key. Heard Archangel flew in some top secret program not long ago.
Big difference on 40% of 10 versus 30. Yeah? Stealing from me, you bet your ass it's your problem. Ah! Damn you it. kidding me? Way to make a mess in front of my new rook. Hey, steal from me and get caught. Better off dead. Sounds like you did the fleet a favor. Now toss this body out of an airlock before it turns into a damn air freshener. The hell took you so long? Forget how to grab jump or something? Fair enough. Glad to see you showing some backbone. Just be careful that you can back up that attitude before you square off with someone who can kick your ass. But, all that aside, you made it. So now, you get to hear a nifty history lesson. Pencils ready? Good. This floating scrap heap you're standing on is called the Key. Used to be an old UC military star station, and now it's the fleet's base of operations. Might look a little beat up on the outside, but we keep it together. Wow, thanks, Professor. That's, that's just terribly fascinating. I'll be certain to pass that on to the maintenance crew who have to use bailing wire to keep the plating from peeling off. Anyway, I'll tell you all about the key, but it's better if I show you too. Follow me. All right, history time. So, the key is in orbit around Suvorov. That's the very same ice ball where the United Colonies built a supermax prison they call the Lock. The UC is so clever. Supermax prison, Lock, Key, huh, cute, huh? Now, we've got everything the fleet needs right here. Of course, you've got to pay for it. Remember, on the key, credits. Hey, champ. I'm. What the hell is this? All right, all right. Hang on, Nev. Before you get pissed, I've got my hands full. Jasmine. Sweetie, I'm trying to give a tour here. So you want to tell me why those damn doors are sealed? It's called a malfunction. You know, that thing I spend most of my day dealing with. Believe me, my people are on it. Have a little faith for once. Aww. And you always, Angel. This here's Jasmine. You need anything for your ship, she's got you covered. We'll hit up the depot next since these doors have given out on us. So anyway, we were talking about the lock. About a hundred years ago, the prisoners down there rioted and took over the place. After stealing some ships, they were actually able to make it up here and took over the key. About time you brought us new blood, neighbor. I was getting tired of trading with the same old faces. You're just ticked everyone's getting wise to your ridiculous prices, Aludra. Anyway, welcome to the depot, Rook. Well, you'll be lucky if these blood-sucking leeches don't bleed you completely dry. Whoa, whoa. It's not our fault that people don't appreciate how much it costs to get untraceable merchandise onto the key. Neva's just whining because she thinks she lost a ton of cash selling us a shipment of gear. She should have done her homework. Yeah, sure, laugh it up. I'll remember that next time I need something from you cheapskates. Let's move on. <clears throat> Back to my story. After the liberated prisoners grabbed the key, they established it as a base of operations and began pirating the spaceways. That was how the Crimson Fleet began. Of course, Jasper Crix had a lot to do with all that, but uh, we'll get to him later. Rook, meet Zuri, queen of the rare exports. If I don't have it, you don't need it. Neuroamps, blueprints. Hit her up and she'll take care of you. 
Speaking of which, you still owe me for that last purchase, Neva. It's like five figures. Don't make me collect it the hard way. <laughs> the hard way? Oh no. Rook, protect me from Zuri's vengeance. Enough of the bullshit, Zuri. I'll pay you when I pay you. Deal with it. Got a problem with that? Take it up with the boss. If it's On hard the to right, find, you've got I'm Bradley probably got from the it. Trade Authority. I'm sure you know the deal there. He'll buy pretty much anything, no matter how hot. Then we got our med bay on the left, run by the one and only Samina Mizra. She'll patch you up, if you've got the money. We don't run any free clinics up in here, you don't? Okay, this is our final stop. Over there, you've got the last Nova, where Bog serves watered-down drinks at ridiculously exorbitant prices. And right here is the most important place on the entire station. The Reckoner's Corps, run by the incomparable Shinya Voss. Another new Rook, Neva? I can't believe Delgado still lets you recruit, given what happened with the last one. You mean Austin Wraith? It's been taken care of, all right? I don't like loose ends, and this Rook is the one who tied it off. Perhaps next time you'll try to be a bit more discerning regarding your choices. It's far more cost-effective. Yeah, yeah, I love you too, darling. Anyway, Shinya handles our lifeblood. The money. We call him our Reckoner, but if you ask me, he's actually a pain in the ass. And Neva will slit your throat if she thinks you'll bleed creds. Go to hell, boss. Take care of our new friend here, or I'll find a way to pull the pin on that little party popper in your chest. Anyway, Shinya will get you set up in our system. I've got real work to do. Once you're done, head upstairs and I'll introduce you to the boss. Time for a proper introduction. I am Shinya Voss, the official reckoner for the Crimson Fleet. And since Neva so thoughtfully mentioned it, yes, this is a bomb embedded in my chest. And no, I'll never know the meaning of the word humble. In fact, I find Delgado's idea of a security measure to be quite empowering. Glad you approve. Obviously, betrayal isn't taken lightly around here. Since I oversee the bulk of transactions and maintain all accounts for the fleet, I'm a prime target for information. Should our enemies capture me, or I grew any semblance of a moral conscience, you might consider me the greatest threat we have. For Delgado, the bomb grants peace of mind, and a certain degree of safety. It's been over five years since I've stepped off the key. Leaving this place puts far too much at risk. Now? Let me get you set up. A moment while I convene with the core. Thanks to advanced modifications even Ryujin would envy, I can interface directly with our mainframe and the Galbank network. This allows me to move and clean credits faster and more efficiently than any run-of-the-mill cyber runner. There. You're done. All you need now is Delgado's blessing, and you'll be one of us. The perfect segue into my final subject. Thanks to our relations with contacts across the galaxy, we always have a steady stream of jobs available. I've granted you all the necessary permissions to access these listings at any time, using the computers that surround the core. If Neva's chosen wisely, we certainly will. Now, I believe that covers all I have to say. So you can run along to Delgado. Take the elevator to the upper level. You should be able to find your way from there, I hope. All right, listen up. You can all stop complaining. Atrium to cargo bay doors have been repaired. Oh, and you're so welcome. So there I am. Now. You see security on my tail, and my grab Too many missions. just chokes. Not enough time. And you know what I find back there? The fattest leech I've ever seen. Worm nearly got me done.
Every captain here has earned their stripes. Bleeding for them. Oh, wait. Say that again. So, now that we are all here, it's time to get down to business. The two of you are the only rooks that have made the latest cut. The rest, well, let's just say they won't be joining us ever again. Neva's willing to put her neck on the line and vouch for you, which means you've got what it takes to join the Crimson Fleet. You'd better not disappoint, or you'll find yourself answering to me personally. All right, let's get started here. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, you're in it for the long haul. No one quits. No one retires. The only way out is death. You stay loyal or you pay the consequences. Fleet before friends. Fleet before family. Fleet before yourself. Boss. <laughs> Good. You're getting it already. I like that. Can we get on with this? I want to get drunk at the last Nova. I'm impressed. That is the first intelligent thing you have said this entire time, Mathis. Since you two seem so eager to move forward, let's get to your next job. Pack your cold weather gear, Rooks. Where we are going, you're going to need it. Oh, God, don't tell me you're dragging him down to Suvaral for another one of your little initiation runs. Ten Johns to the surface, twelve dead rooks. You think by now you would have given up on that goddamn campfire story? Crix's legacy is no story, neighbor. We've got fresh eyes in the fleet. And if these two want to impress, they're going to help me search those ruins. I hope you're right, Dale. That new code we grabbed for the lot cost us a ton of credits. And a decent captain. This initiation, as Neva calls it, is your chance to see where it all began. On Suvorov with Jasper Griggs. Griggs led the riots that gave birth to the Crimson Fleet. And if his legacy is still out there, we're going to be the ones to find it. Before Crix left the fleet, he left a message talking about a major score. One that would set up the fleet to be a big player in the settled systems. Somewhere down the line, they started calling it Crix's legacy. And everyone who's tried to find it has wound up empty-handed, missing, or dead. If we're gonna beat those odds, we'll first need a lead. And I would wager we will find one on Subarov. Dale's leaving out the best part. That this whole search is based on a handful of words on a very old slate. Crix left a lot of big talk on that recording. And not a lot of facts. Some of us believe in it more than others. <laughs> Don't listen to her. When we get our hands on Crix's legacy, the fleet will be operating at a completely different level. We will become more than a match for UC Sistef. Exactly. Now you're beginning to understand. Okay, enough discussion. We have got a lot of work to do. To that end, the next stop is the lock. I've had Jazz feed the coordinates into your ship's computer. Since Mathis doesn't have a ship, he's going to ride with me. I'll see you down there, Rook. Don't keep me waiting.
about time you got here. I told you you were wasting your time, Del. I hate surprises. Just do what I say, and you might even walk away from this without turning into a goddamn ice sculpture. And Mathis, I am running things around here, so keep your mouth shut. You got that? <laughs> Fine. All right, listen up, because I am only going to go through this once. We are here to dig up any info about Grix's legacy. We are not here to scrap for loot. Whatever you pick up, don't think, don't get creative, bring it straight to me. It's <laughs> so simple, even a rook like you can't screw it up. Hold on, no scrapping? How the hell am I supposed to make money around here? All right, that's enough. If either of you want to fly with the Crimson Fleet, then you need to follow one simple rule. When you're on a job, you do exactly what I say. No questions asked. If that doesn't work for you, just say so, and I will leave you on this ice ball without a ship. You will be dead within hours. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of ground to cover between the landing area and the lock, so let's get moving. and fleets made of!
Here we are. The place where Jasper Griggs laid the groundwork for finding the legacy, and eventually, the Crimson Fleet. The lock. Yeah, he needs to get this thing open, like, right now. It's freezing out here. Then crank up your suit heat, Mathis, because it's probably not going to get much better once we are inside. All right, let's keep moving. Standing out here isn't doing us any good. This ID card cost a small fortune. Let's hope it pays off. Sure. Must have been awful. Better them than us, though, am I right? Wait half a second! Did you hear that? Wait. What was that? Fuck him! Must be a nest. I bet these things are crawling all over the place. Yeah, and their bodies probably heard us firing from about a kilometer away. Hallelujah. Hey, how about that? Guess you're not so stupid after all. <laughs> well, look at that. One firefight and the two of you become best buddies. Now let's see. Looks like we are inside some sort of prisoner transfer area. But everything is locked down tight. Since you are such good friends, why don't you and Mathis head up to that control room and see if you can get some more of these doors open? Just great. 
the hell are we supposed to do now? The plan? Who gives a shit about the plan? Let's face it, we're on our own now. Well, yeah, we'll get to that eventually. For right now, I have a much better idea. We use this opportunity to take out Delgado, and at the same time, make some serious credits for ourselves. I had a feeling you'd be on board. Okay, here's my plan. Let's pretend for a second Delgado's correct, and there's information here about Crix's legacy. Once we get rid of him, we'll dig up the garbage ourselves and sell whatever we find to Neva. We'll be rolling in credits. <sighs> Playing it safe, huh? I can respect that. But you better have me back when I make me move. Now, let's find a way out of here. <laughs> I guess that's one way through. I'm not going anywhere. And second, try and dig up whatever you can about Jasper Cricks. You both got that? Yeah? You'd better. And tell Mathis not to get any bright ideas, or I will gut him myself. Action report, Thard Bryant reporting. The Shuttle Bay techs were complaining about hearing some type of banging or scraping. We were sent to investigate. We headed to the surface and immediately engaged some indigenous creatures that had been burrowing through the ice. We managed to drive them off, but I'm certain they'll be back. Fortunately, our squad only suffered minor injuries. First, we deal with all the maintenance issues at the lock, and now this. I'm going to request a transfer.
Cell D03118. Okay. It's a place to start, I guess. an armory. Looks like they cleared this place out. Well, well, what do we have here? Let me say. This sort of come in handy. All right, let's keep moving.
the lock, and the place is continuing to go downhill. We've been dealing with TV malfunctions, communications issues with the key, faulty electronics and unpredictable surface conditions. How this place manages to function at all is anyone's guess. No one's bearing the brunt of this more than the inmates. Normally, I wouldn't give a damn about them, but this is downright insane. I'm starting to get nervous that we're going to have a riot on our hands if conditions don't improve. What the hell? This is bullshit, Delgado. I help plenty. Is that madness? Tell him to shut up. I will deal with him later. Whatever. Okay. Now all we have to do is find a way off of this planet. Um, let me see. Ah, here we go. I'm looking at schematics for the lock. And I don't... I think there's a way to get you back to the surface from there. But I can open the outer doors to the shuttle bay and let you fly one of the shuttles down there directly up to the key. Good answer. You're learning fast. Okay. Let me see. One of these probably opens the door. Shuttle bay activated. Initiating the icing process. Please stand by. Yup. That's got it. Might take a while, though. Those bay doors have not been opened in almost a century. You have done a hell of a job, Rook. We will talk when you get back to the key. Why the hell did you lie to Delgado about me? You didn't do all this work alone. Oh, come on. There's no need for that. You're right. Maybe I could have done more of the brain work. But hey, at least I helped you take out those things, whatever the hell they were, right? Look, um, about all that killing Delgado stuff, why don't we just forget about everything that I said? You know, like it never happened. <sighs> now, let's get the heck out of here. This again.
There you are. The hell took you so long? It's about time. I was about to fly down and loot your bodies. Not now, neighbor. Well, you said you found something. Hand it over. That's it? Just one slate. After losing so much of our crew, it better be a map with a big red X on it. Well, I'll be damned. Legacy wasn't referring to Crix's fortune. It's the name of an actual ship. A Galbank transport probably loaded with credits. Never heard any stories about a Galbank ship going down. And even if it had happened, it would have been picked clean years ago. No, neighbor. Think. If Galbank covered it up, and over time, the location was eventually forgotten, it wouldn't be on anyone's radar. Okay. This changes things. Now that we know what we are looking for, we have to narrow the search. And the recording that you found proves that it is out there. All we have to do is find it. Let us start with what we know. It was a Galbank ship, which means the company is going to have records of where it went down. Neva, weren't you working on a deal with Rokov? Something about a... Big wig charity event on one of Trident Starliners? Are you serious? I've been working on that gig for three months. That's my score. Ay, Dios mío. Will you shut up about your score and think for a second? That Starliner has a Galbank VIP suite aboard, which means. Come on, Neva. This isn't hard. Which means a Galbank exec will be aboard. We grab their credentials and get ourselves into the Galbank archives in New Atlantis. Holy shit, that might actually work. I'll send a message to Rokov right away. Pack your bags, Rook. You're going on vacation. And since you've earned it, take this gun with you. Might come in handy when Rokov screws everything up as usual. Good, because that is exactly what you are going to be doing. Neighbor and I are too well known to walk around the Starliner without being recognized. If Trident Security spotted us, it'd be over. I need you to board that ship, make contact with Rokov, and get me those credentials. You'd better. Oh, before you leave. I wanted you to know that I took what you said about Mathis into consideration, and I've decided to cut him from the fleet. Honestly, I'm surprised he made it off Suvorov in one piece. We'll see. That's it then. Next stop for you is Rokov Starliner, the Siren of the Stars. And remember, Rokov does not need to know anything about Grix's legacy. For now, it's just between us. Now get out of here. Hey, Rook. Before you head out, I need to have a word with you. Meet me at the last Nova after you wrap things up with Mathis. Hey, I want to talk to you. Thanks to you, Delgado's cut me from the fleet. Well, you know what? You better get your own fleet, because I'm coming after you. Oh, I see. You think you're some kind of big shot, is that it? I'm gonna show poor Mathis a little mercy now that you're Delgado's best buddy, yeah? Well, guess what? Your generosity is getting me kicked off the key. And that means you better watch your back. Oh, I will, I can promise you that. Best part is, you won't even see it coming. Now get the hell out of me way! Those crabs ain't 
ain't gonna steal themselves. There you are. All right, look. I've been lining up a score with that asshole roll call from the Siren of the Stars for months. I'm not about to let a payday slip through my fingers. So guess what? You're gonna finish the job for me. Seems to me, instead of trawling deep space for... Of course you'll get a cut. That's how everything works around here. Why would this be any different? Wokov's been tipping me off about some kind of bullshit charity event that the Siren of the Stars is hosting. At the event, they're gonna give away something called the Earth Savior Award, which is worth tens of thousands of credits. So it's simple. While you're on the Siren, swiping those gal bait credentials, I want you to grab that award and bring it to me. Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're hilarious. You should stand up on the bar here and start telling more jokes. This crowd would eat it up. Look, you can make all the jokes and excuses you want. But if you don't come back with the ES award, I'm gonna deduct it from your pay. Either way, I get my money. How much you walk away with is in your own hands. Got it? Then it's settled. Good. All right, Rook, we're done here. Now, get your ass to the siren and bring me my goods. Stay sharp, Rook. Last ever. Anything ship-related, you're at the right place. So, looks like we got ourselves a new rook. Once again, I'm Jazz, resident engineer here. Like Neva said, you need ship parts, repairs? I'll hook you up, as long as your credits are good. Well, it did when I first got here. Most of these folks aren't too keen on maintenance. Today, the key's about as safe as any other UC station, just with a hell of a lot more personality. I can guarantee your ship will be in good hands, so if you're looking for an upgrade, let me know. We got the best selection in the settled systems. Illegal, unregistered, recalled, we sell it all, no questions asked. Anything that keeps the UC and Free Star Rangers off your tail is a must-have in my book. Just let me know when you want to talk business. If you've got the credits, I've got the time. Sounds like fun. Let's see what I've got. I bet operations on the key are clown. Yo, back. So how did it go? Then things are moving forward. Perfect. Nice job, Rook. I was certain we'd fool Delgado, but never. She's a sharp one. Overcoming her scrutiny is no small matter. Did you discover anything worth reporting yet? Legacy. Why does that sound familiar? Wait a moment. Are you telling me Delgado may have actually located Crix's legacy? I suppose it's possible, sir. Intelligence picked up a bit of chatter on that subject recently. We assumed it was some sort of tall tale or a story to attract recruits to their cause. 
Well, let's find out if Delgado is chasing ghosts, or he's smarter than we suspect. Let me see what we have here. Nope. There are no records of a gal bank transport named the legacy in the database. <laughs> I think Delgado's trying to manipulate you. What do you think, sir? I think there's no record because Gal Bank is hiding something. Delgado's no fool. If he risked his own neck to get that information, then he must be on to something. We have to take this seriously. What's your next move? Clever, Delgado. Very clever. If I were in your place, I'd be trying to do the exact same thing. We can't let Delgado get his hands on what could potentially turn out to be the largest haul of credits the Crimson Fleet's ever seen. Maybe I should head out to New Atlantis, sir. I could press the Galbank execs for information. Get ahead of everything. No. Let's allow this to run its course. We have our agent here feeding us information. I think that's good enough for now. There's more to this than just finding the location of the transport. Jasper Crix was clever. For some reason, he never got there. It's imperative that you do. If the Crimson Fleet gets its hands on a transport full of currency, it would be disastrous for the settled systems. I need you to do whatever you can to bring us more information. And for God's sake, don't kill anyone on that Starliner. You're both dismissed. Cis Def Marines are the best of the best. Remember to turn in any evidence fragments. Excellent. Let me have it, and I'll upload it to our database. It's amazing that all this romantic nonsense about Crix's legacy really just amounts to a rumor Jasper Crix picked up in jail. It just goes to show you how a tiny rumor can snowball into a full-blown fairy tale. Find anything else? I'll be damned. So some of the UC guards at the lock helped touch off the riots. Everyone thought he was some kind of legendary criminal mastermind, but even the great Jasper Cricks needed a helping hand to get out of prison. Anything else? Yeah, you're right. But there's no way this was a solo job. Shifting all those parts takes serious manpower. I'll send this to Mast so they can shake the tree a bit, see what falls out. Looks like Durand better start looking for parts somewhere else. Have any more? So Voss engineered a way to directly interface with the key's mainframe? I knew he was a math genius, but didn't realize he was so tech savvy. Well, we'll share this information with Galbank. Hopefully it'll help them shore up the security on their cryptocurrency. That it? So, Mr. Yasso is actually Lionel Soto. We thought Soto was dead. At least, that's what the records told us. I'll have the records updated, but seeing as Mr. Yasso has surrounded himself with the Crimson Fleet, there isn't much we can do. Yet. Find anything else? Okay, fine, fine. I know there's more out there, so keep on it. Let me know if you need anything else. About time you showed up. All right, I want to know what's going on. I've been trying to get Delgado's attention for, oh, I don't know, three years now. And what do I get? Nothing but radio silence. Then out of nowhere, just when Neva and I are closing in on a huge score of our own, Delgado orders me to help you out. Yeah, I figured you'd say something like that. Just another one of Delgado's loyal little soldiers, huh? Fine, have it your way. So Neva's message said you were here for Dombrowski. Was that all she sent you here to do? 
Or was there something else you were sent here to steal? Hmm. Okay. So why are you targeting a Gall Bank exec anyway? Not exactly your average Crimson Fleet prey. Why the interest? Oh, I see. We're playing this game now. Fine, fine. Well, you might as well turn around and hop back aboard your ship because you're not getting near Dombrowski without my help. Well, well. It appears we have a mind reader here. You're absolutely right. I don't want money. I want back into the Crimson Fleet. It's as simple as that. <sighs> Fine. You want to play it that way and suit yourself. Dombrowski's a full-timer aboard the Siren of the Stars. Probably spends more time cruising the space lanes than actually working. Fortunately, the Siren is hosting the Tehran Preservation Society charity gala. Larry won't be able to resist showing off his VIP clout. To get what you need, you're gonna have to attend the gala, talk to his fellow philanthropists, and dig up some dirt. <laughs> yeah, well, lucky for you, it's not black tie, so you'll be fine. This card will allow you to access the Starview Ballroom. If you need my help, I'll be relaxing in one of the upper level lounges. Head inside and mingle with the crowd. No one likes Dombrowski, so they'll be more than happy to share his dirty secrets. Now you're speaking my language. Oh, there's one last thing. Dryden equips all of their Starliners with the latest acoustic threat detection. Meaning that you lose patience and kill anyone aboard the ship, security will be alerted and all hell will break loose. Anyway, I suppose that's enough to get you started. Good luck. Oh, and while you're at the gala, avoid the canopies. They're frozen. Every day that I wake up in my bunk, I close my lips. Trident must have spent a fortune equipping this ship. These newer vessels are more or less, right? Nice, isn't it? But Larry likes to drop overly complex words into conversations. I'm sure he knows that it annoys people, but he does it anyway. Enjoy the rest of the event. Hello, are you a member of us? The considerable amounts of cash that Dumbroski donates is the only reason we allow him to attend society functions. Don't forget to donate to the cause. The society chair has really outdone herself this time. Quite a lovely starlight. Larry has an A-level executive rating over at Galbank, which means he has access to everyone's accounts at the touch of a button. That's all then? Here for okay. business? Oh. I heard he uses Galbank's VIP suite on the Siren of the Stars almost monthly. Does the man ever do any real work? Nice to have met you. Pleased to make your Have you tried the canapes? <coughs> I don't know why Larry's attending this event. He could care less about any planet, let alone the Earth. Hmm. Well, that I certainly was boring. hope they decide. He's been spending a lot of time with Claudia Swist. Quality. Nice to have met you.
locked down, remember? Sorry, do I know you? Look, I think you're definitely confused here. I really don't have time to have a discussion with you. My partner's waiting for me. He's a very important man. <sighs> I can't believe this is happening. I told Larry to keep his big mouth shut, but did he listen? No! He had to impress his friends and treat me like a trophy. Look, I've been in this business for a long time, and I know how this game works, so let's skip all the banter and get it over with. What's it gonna take to make us both happy? You're willing to pay me to give you dirt on Larry? <laughs> Sorry, I... I thought I'd end up on the short end of the deal. You know, this whole thing really pisses me off. Larry and I had the perfect scheme where thousands of credits all worked out, and then he goes and flushes the whole thing down the toilet. Oh, angry isn't even the right word. The plan was solid. Larry got together with myself and this other guy, Gabriel Vera. He's some big wig over at UC Security. I doctored the transactions, Larry wiped them off the system, and Vera kept the legal pressure off of us. We were scamming Galbank for months. It was going well until I discovered Larry was cheating everyone by changing each transaction in his favor before deleting them. I wish I had some. Maybe you should try talking to Gabriel Vera. He should be around here somewhere. If he doesn't want to cooperate, just mention my name. That should grab his attention. Good luck. You're gonna need it. I hope you hurt Dombrowski. Nail his ass. Any complaints about your crew should be directed to one of the staff. So, what brings you aboard? Hello. You here for the charity event? Well, I work for UC Security, meaning that business isn't exactly my area of expertise. I'm afraid I can't really help you. If you're looking for a business opportunity, you might want to check with someone else. Claudia sent you, did she? Look, friend, I don't know if you're just a little drunk, maybe a touch crazy, or both. Whatever you think you know about me, you're dead wrong. So back off. Yeah, but before you walk away, let me give you a free piece of advice. Anything you try to report will boil down to your word against mine. And since I work for UC Security, who do you think people will believe? So, what brings you aboard? I saw your little exchange with Vera. Keep that up and I guarantee that Embassar's gonna demand that you be arrested. No, it certainly didn't. But at least we know you've caught him on the back foot. There's clearly something going on between Vera, Swiss, and Dombrowski, but we need hard evidence to use it to our advantage. The problem is he's not gonna talk to you in public. We need to get Vera isolated so he'll spill everything he knows. Smart. If there's an emergency, standard practice is for all passengers to clear the decks and report to their cabins for lockdown. I think the best chance we have would be to tamper with the life support sensors. Manipulate a few controls and you can fool the monitoring system into thinking there's a, a life support failure. And there you have your emergency. 
I have no idea what all of that technical jargon meant, but cause enough confusion and it will buy us plenty of time. One more thing. If Chief Engineer Sundin gives you any trouble, tell him I'll erase that gambling debt he owes me. I prefer you use that as a last resort, but hey, what's the harm in losing a few credits when I'm on the brink of rejoining the fleet, right? Anyway, I better start backing. Things are getting hot around here, and won't be long before Trident figures out you had help. Don't you have somewhere to be? Please remain in designated passenger areas at all times. Quite a love. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, uh, hold up. This area is off limits to passengers. Wait a second. You're Captain Rokov's guest, right? Didn't expect to see you down here. Sorry to give you trouble. What can I do for you? Oh, uh, sorry. That area is off limits. No exceptions. Ah, you're a fellow techie, huh? <laughs> I can respect that. Tell you what. I'm just going to step out for a bit and stretch my legs. Maybe you can hold this for me while I'm away. Whatever you do, don't break. Make anything, or I'll be out of the yard. There's no cause for alarm. I'm sure this is just a minor malfunction or a drill. I was wondering if you were the cause of the shipwide emergency. It's time you stop playing games and tell me why you're here. You want me to help you? Are you completely out of your mind? I help you by handing over evidence and I end up incriminating myself. Why would I do that? Claudia said that. 
You sure? Damn it! That means my money's already gone. And Dombrowski's going to walk away with a fortune. I'd love to see the bastard fly. But if I give you that information and it falls into the wrong hands, I could end up in jail. At least I walk away with something. All right. You have yourself a deal. Here, with this slate and this recording to tie it all together, you'll be able to nail his ass to the wall. He'll do whatever you want. Just remember that you promised to leave me out of it. You better tell Dombrowski to run, because if you don't kill him, Excuse me, would you mind telling me exactly what the hell you're doing in my cabin? Am I hearing you correctly? <laughs> you should mind your manners. Imagine pushing your way into my cabin uninvited and issuing such demands. And why in goodness name would I possibly agree to that ridiculous demand? I wish I could, but if anybody found out I told you... I think you may be right. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, just take the damn thing already. Listen, maybe you can keep this between us. If the award goes missing, there's no need for the insurance company to get involved. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive further instructions. must be the one who's been accosting Claudia and Gabriel. I'm uncertain what you hope to accomplish here, but it appears we should rapidly enter into some sort of negotiation. Excellent, excellent. So, before we begin, let's review the facts. First, it's clear that you've obtained insider knowledge of my arrangement to defraud Galbank. The means and the method, perhaps, but not the motive. And second, I'm going to hypothesize that my compatriots are despondent regarding their share and have assisted you with this endeavor, hmm? Since we're speaking and I'm not at the reporting end of a bullet, this leads me to conclude that you desire something personal from me. I see. Well, that certainly places a damper on our negotiations. Perhaps I can hasten All my diatribe to temper your violence-ridden your contribution. In blunt terms, you have compromising Please materials about me in your possession. The only thing I have to offer in return are my gal bank credentials. I assume that's what you've been angling for all along? Splendid. It appears we've reached an accord. Wait, I'm sorry. Let me simplify that for you. It sounds like we have a deal. Oh, of course I trust you'll understand if I ask for us to avoid any further contact. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to formulate how I'm going to utterly ruin two very annoying business associates. Good day.
Well, looks like everything worked out. Just like we planned. I'm glad one of us did. I'm just hoping you'll put in a good word for me with Delgado. Otherwise, I'd risk my career for nothing. You know, I'm still wondering exactly what you needed those credentials for. You feel like All telling me, partner? May I have your attention, please? Ah, so he told you to keep it from me. I see. Emergency. I wouldn't please want you to risk your position with the fleet like I did, so I'll just leave it alone. Anyway, I suppose there's nothing stopping me from rejoining the fleet now. It's been a long time coming. I owe you one, Dover Beach. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit short in that department myself. Perhaps I can pay you back later in some other way. Just look for me on the uh, key, and I'll see what I can do. Well, I suppose this is where we part company. Hopefully the next time we meet, we'll be aboard the key. The Siren of the Stars is now in emergency status.
time you see Bob, tell him to let know. Your buddy Rokoff is aboard the key. Told me everything had happened. Yeah, he won't shut up about you. Keeps going on and on. <laughs> now I remember why we kicked his ass out the fleet. Still a lazy old bastard, huh? Can't say I'm surprised. That's not exactly filling me with confidence, Rook. So I'm going to leave it up to you. Is Rokoff in or is he out? Huh. Interesting. You think it's worth wasting credits on the guy? It's not even worth wasting a bullet on Rokov. If Rokov had anything to do with putting this information about Krix's legacy in our hands, then I say cut him in for a taste. You don't like it, Neva? Too bad. Speaking of which, let me see that data you copied from the Galbank archives. Ah, so the Galbank transport went down over Bannock Bor. Bannock. Why does that sound familiar? Neva? Yeah, yeah, keep your panties on. I'm looking it up. And... I got it. Bannock 4. Let's see. Damn it. Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant. We can't even get a ship near the thing without frying every circuit aboard. Yeah, Rook. Just like every other time we've gone on this worthless treasure hunt. Both of you shut up and think for a second. I'm sure Creeks hit the same roadblock. All we need to do is figure out how he got around it. This sounds like a goddamn waste of time to me. I refuse to believe that we've come this far only to smash straight into a wall. I don't care what either of you think. We have to push through. Neva, the Galbank data says the transport had a CBR-27 transponder. Can we track that kind of thing? Pinpoint its exact location? That transponder is military grade. We're talking ultra-bit encryption, constantly reshuffling frequencies. We don't have shit like that laying around. But before you get that pissy look on your face, I heard that the UC's been working on a ship signal decryption system called the Comm Spike. We grab that little beauty, and we'll be able to track anything you want. All right, here is the plan, so shut up and listen. Rook, I want you and Neva to put your heads together and get us that Comm Spike. I don't care if it's mounted at the top of mast. I want it. In the meantime, I'm going to find out more about this EM class gas giant problem. And I think I know just who to ask. Give me a little time to crunch the numbers on the comm spike with Jazz, and I'll point us in the right direction. Yeah? Well, I got news for you. You're no damn picnic to work with either, so deal with it, Rook. All right, that is enough. We are in arm's reach of Crix's legacy, and I don't have time to deal with this kind of bullshit. Now, both of you, get the hell out of here and get to work. All right. Let's get this over with. Follow me. something all right 
Let's get right to it. Did you get the Earth Savior Award, or am I gonna be very disappointed? Well, well, then look at that. You followed my directions, and now you're gonna end up with some credits in your pocket. That about does it then. A hell of a deal for both of us, I'd say. Anyway, here's your cash. Keep this up, and I might even start respecting you. All right, Fleet. We've all got work to do, so let's get to it. Pardon. So I heard there was a bit of excitement on the Siren of the Stars. Your handiwork, I assume? Yes, and I heard there were no casualties. Excellent work. Except for the ecliptic hit squad that you took down at the Archives. We've taken care of that mess, by the way. Speaking of which, I assume you copied the information from the Galbank's computers. Let me see what you've got. So the legacy went down at Bannock 4. Bannock 4. Hmm. Why does that sound familiar, Doft? Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant, sir. There isn't a ship in the fleet that could safely get near that type of world. 
good. That should slow them down for a while. Look, I spent all day listening to those idiots running in circles. Are you telling me I don't know my own job? All right, calm down, Lieutenant. Even if Delgado has an immediate solution to the EM problem, there's still the matter of tracing the Legacy's transponder signal. They have information about the comm spike? <sighs> Damn it. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that device, sir. No, you shouldn't be familiar with it. It's a highly classified project. It's an advanced signal decryption and tracking device that the UC Navy's been working on for years. How the hell did the Crimson Fleet find out about that? There must be an information leak somewhere, sir. It's the only thing that makes sense. I'll see what I can find out. Fine. This is what we're going to do. You keep playing along and go after the comm spike. Lieutenant Toft and I will see what we can find out about Bannock 4. Perfect. Just stick with the plan and we'll see who gets to Krix's legacy first. Early reports say your mission on the Siren was a This success. mission is going to require sure discretion. The is Good. The more you find, the stronger our case. Tisk tisk. Looks like Mr. Rokoff lied on his application to Trident Luxury Lines about having a clean record. No matter. Next time he jumps from the key, we'll have him picked up. That will be one less fleet captain for us to worry about. Have any more? Are you kidding me? Dombrowski was already making a six-figure salary, and yet he couldn't resist starting an embezzlement scheme. It makes me sick. Ah. Oh. It's gonna be an absolute pleasure to throw his butt in prison. Anything else? All right. Keep up the good work. I'll be here if you have any more questions. All right, Jazz. What do you got? According to the latest, the comm spike is being developed at UC Star Station SY920. Location undisclosed. Fantastic. So how do we disclose it? We could lean on your smuggling contact. Call in that favor. You know who I mean. Our friend on Jimson. Nice one, Jazz. I'll make the arrangements. All right, Rook. Next stop, New Atlantis. Your connection is Juan Dayu. She's got most of the premium UC smuggling routes locked down tight. If you don't piss her off, she should be able to sneak you past SY920's security. Just remember to count your fingers after you shake hands with her. I sure hope so. But she might be our only crack at finding a decent decryption device. Once Juan gets you past the guard dogs, it's gonna be on you to locate the comm spike. According to the data we have, it's in the prototype phase, meaning there should only be a single device aboard the station. Basically, you break it, you bought it. Hmm. Interesting. Well, don't take any chances. Nave is right. Just grab everything labeled comm spike that isn't nailed down. Oh, and one more thing. SY920 is a UC military installation. That means it's guarded by heavily armed troops. And we both know those idiots don't mess around. If you intend to turn the place into a shooting gallery, you might want to be sure you're hauling an arsenal. 
because you're gonna need it. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Okay, so I'm gonna arrange a meeting with Juan at Kay's place in the well. In the meantime, I'll make sure Jazz comes up with a solution to the electromagnetic atmosphere problem at Bannock 4. <laughs> okay, you'll make sure. More like get drunk while Jazz does all the hard work. Typical. Privileges of rank, my darling. We'll discuss it a little later. And you, get the hell out of here. And don't come back without that calm spike in your cargo bay. Good luck. Take your neighbor's new recruit? That you're new, but capable. Other than that, not a whole lot. Neva talks a lot, but that's not the same as talking too much. You're still a mystery to me. That's why 920 is one of my regular stops, so I already have the necessary approvals. Neva says you're after a piece of UC tech. So together, we're going to need to get you on board. I can do that, but I have conditions. If I can be candid, for this job to work, we'll have to do this my way. We take my ship, and you're a member of my crew. But make no mistake, once you board, the risk is entirely yours. This route is highly lucrative, and sacrificing it is not an option. Good, then we have a deal. In any case, when you're ready, meet me at my ship. It's the Jade Swan. And make sure you're prepared for the long haul. Once you're on board SY920, you can't come and go as you please. We'll talk more on the ship. Glad you're in the fleet. If you weren't, I would have killed you already. Yes? All right. A few things to note. When we get to the checkpoint, UC military will be hailing us. Let me do the talking. Return your piece of cargo if you have to. That will serve you well here. Some people mistake silence for weakness or, at worst, compliance. 
But to me, it's the loud ones who leave themselves vulnerable. Now, like I said before, once we take off, there's no turning back until this job is done. If you need to take care of anything before we leave, do it. If you want to ask me any other questions, go for it. All right, then get comfortable. We leave for SY920 immediately. All crew prepare for takeoff. Routing power to engine and grab drive. All systems go. We'll graph jump the SY920 from here. Don't worry about your personal ship, the fleet will make sure it's secure. You can take this time to prepare. Just try not to bother my pilot while they're flying. Don't worry, Captain. I've spent half my life walking and chewing gum at the same time. I can handle a little banter. Sounds like you're putting in a request for double duty. Captain, I retract my earlier statement. For the record, I don't even like gum. <laughs> Noted. Just get us there safe. Roger that. Okay, we're in. First things first. The station is enormous, with checkpoints everywhere. To get past them, you'll need a military uniform. And to get a uniform, you'll need to get to the barracks. There should be a way through the vents. You can get to them via the maintenance door downstairs. There's an intercom there as well, where we can make contact. Once you get a uniform, it should be fairly easy to find an elevator to the command bay. But if at any point your cover's blown, I'm gone. I would hope not. But if they do, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Either way, for now, get on that station and find that intercom. We'll talk more then. Yes? What? Jade Swan. Loading and unloading only. Stay clear. Security on this station's always been tight. Now it's
Need your clearance code, Marine. All right, Ensign, let's hear it. Your clearance in Akasaka. Commander Natara, test lights for the latest prototypes are ready to go. put in a request for more personnel. It seems there was an accident. Ugh. It's always something with that doctor. Not to change the subject, but are we concerned about potential leave? No. Until you can provide more substantial <laughs> The team is looking for more test pilots. Can you talk to the commander? Get me reinstated. The Tsar is doing you a favor, Marcin. Do you prefer to court martial? Dishonorable discharge? Because all of that was on the table. I would have met you. Besides, we both know the only reason. You were on that project with Intercepting transponder data in the Hoffa system might be promising. Wait, who are you? Why are you in here? Did you not see the sign? The sign outside that says no visitors. Wait, did they not put that up? I requested it ages ago, but not surprising. Ever since Commander Natara took over, the priorities have changed. The comm spike. But I can't just hand it to you. It's a module for a ship. It's attached to a prototype in one of our docking ports. We're still in the testing phase, running decryptions across a variety of signal types. But the results so far have been very promising. It can even interpolate signal data lost in the retrieval. It really is a wondrous technology. Yes, it's not quite cracking the Enigma code, but it will give us a significant tactical advantage. We'll be able to infer everything from battle plans to meal consumption. Not that we'd care about that sort of thing. Uh, outside of the effects of diet on combat readiness. And yes, there are certain kinks to be worked out, missing parts and the occasional traumatic injury here and there, but it's all part of the adventure. Yes, it's not the destination, but the journey that matters, <laughs> particularly when the destination is death. But don't worry. We've corrected the problem with the ship's life support systems, and statistical models show a failure rate of less than 2%. In short, I've requested a full squadron of these brave and fearless marines to be transferred to the station. They'll give the prototype a final run, and provided there are minimal casualties, we can present our findings to MAST. Splendid. That was fast. I thought I put in the request this morning. Normally my requests aren't given this much attention, let alone haste. It seems a tad suspicious. Really? And then maybe all of my pestering has finally paid off. You're right. We do need to hurry if we're going to have this module ready in time. All right, you've convinced me. You're the new test pilot. You're already in uniform, so that means you just need a password. 
You'll find the prototype ship at Docking Bay 8. Use the password to access the flight terminals in the control center. And of course, best of luck. You are doing science a great service by undertaking this sacrifice. Reporting for duty, pilot? Access granted. Be sure to head to the control center and schedule the flight. And good luck. Prototype ship, you are cleared for takeoff. We'll begin the test on your departure. Recording test flight data. Please adhere to the scheduled flight plan and let us know if you have any issues. Welcome back, Rook. Looks like you got a new toy for me. Nice to know Neva was right about you. It's good to have a promising rookie with the fleet. I won't deny I helped. Let's hope the compensation reflects that, huh? You bail before I can make the offer, but I'd like to buy you a drink to say thanks. It's the last time I'm paying, of course. Because if Dalgado's right about Crix's legacy, you've earned more than your fair share already with that calm spike. You read my mind. I don't like the thought of putting my routes in jeopardy over an old story. But I respect Delgado and I believe he's on to something. What that is, though, remains to be seen. Anyway, I've kept you long enough. Now that you've had your drink and my debt is paid, it's time for you to give Delgado the good news. That last jump didn't pan out. I need some.
Jasmine tells me that you not only brought us the comp spike, but an entire prototype UC ship. I'm impressed, Rook. Very impressed. Should have taken the compliment, Rook. Dale doesn't give those out often. Juan gave us the full rundown of your little smash and grab operation. She gave you some really high praise. Said you were a pro. And from what I hear, receiving praise from Juan Dayu is quite an accomplishment. All in all, a job well done. Now, on to the business at hand. Jasmine, are you there? Yep, I'm here, boss. What's up? How's it going? I already have two of my crew tearing the ship apart from one end to the other. Comp spike shouldn't be too tough to extract. I'm looking forward to seeing what those UC techs have been up to. Keep me posted. All right, that leaves our electromagnetic atmosphere problem. And I think we've discovered a solution. There's a corporation in the city of Neon called Jenerdyne. They're responsible for the massive conduction grid that powers the city. We get our hands on their electrical absorption tech, and Jasmine swears she can tame it to handle Bannock 4. you damn right she can. My girl can piece together a jump engine with her eyes shut. Literally, I've seen her do it. Lost good money on that bet. All right, let's not get carried away, Mava. Now, why don't you give us the info on our Neon contact? You get to meet up with the lovely Estelle Vincent. She's had her deft little fingers on the pulse of Neon for some time now. Whatever info you need. I guarantee she can get. Estelle is one of the most reliable captains we have in the fleet. If I want something done, there's none of the typical bullshit. It gets done, and afterward we all split the cash. Don't worry. When Grixis Legacy is aboard the key, we'll be splitting plenty of cash. Until then, I want you to do everything Estelle asks. Follow her instructions to a letter. She is valuable to the fleet. You piss her off and we lose her as a contact, you're going to be answering to me. Estelle will be waiting at Madame Savage's place. I'd say don't keep her waiting. But chances are she won't mind. Girl loves her liquor. And keep your eyes on the price. Neon's one big distraction for people like us. So I want you focused. We are one step away from Quix's legacy. And we cannot afford any screw ups. Everything looks clear. It's tough not seeing any action, but securing a station like this is There's been rumors of soldiers. It seems you had quite the eventful mission on your hands. You still have the Crimson Fleet's trust, and you were able to spare lives in the process. Honor. Loyalty and valor are exactly the attributes we admire in a CIS-DEV operative. Excuse me, sir. I hate to interrupt, but there's still the matter of the comm spike to discuss. Yes, of course, Lieutenant. Time is short, and we should get to the matter at hand. Please give me your report. Then it's just a matter of time before she reverse engineers it to fit the fleet's purposes. So what does Delgado have you doing next? Has he solved the Bannock 4 problem? The conduction grid? That's brilliant, but is it actually possible? It's 80-year-old tech. Sorry, sir. The conduction grid is how Neon generates its power. It essentially absorbs lightning strikes and converts it to usable energy. 
It would take a hell of an engineer to modify the technology to handle Bannock 4's EM field. An engineer, like Jasmine Durand. That's the case. Inform our contacts on Neon that our operative will be touching down there in the near future. Absolutely, sir. And before you depart, I wanted you to know that your efforts are helping us gain interest among my superiors. They're finally beginning to believe that we can take down the Crimson Fleet and make amends for the UC's embarrassing mistake. It's long overdue. All right, I suppose that's all for now. I'll be looking forward to your next report. Good luck. And please, be careful. Remember to turn in any evidence fragments you find. Nice work. Let me take a look. Cost overruns, siphoning project funds. How deep does this well go? Our forensic accounting team is going to have their hands full. I'll send this to Mass right away. Let's just hope that a few rotten apples within the UC haven't spoiled the entire bunch. Have any more? Understood. Keep searching and you're bound to find more. I'll be here if you have any more questions. It's tough not seeing any action. It's a bad place for tourists these days. You looking to get zoned? Yeah? Well, if I had a credit for every time I heard that line, I wouldn't be stuck working in this place. So. I'm guessing you're the rook that Delgado sent. Well, let me save both of us some time. Turn around, fly back to the key, and tell the big boss that I'm in no mood to screw around. We'll make this deal when he starts taking me seriously. Specifics, huh? Okay, fine. I spent the last three months setting up this job, burned two contacts and a hell of a lot of credits. The whole time, I'm also keeping Bayou off our backs. That idiot even catches a whiff of money and he latches onto you like a damn leech. All right, all right, I get the point. Let's just get this over with. I don't have a ton of time to stand here and screw around, so I'm gonna make this as clear as possible. You want the conduction grid tech, then you're gonna have to download it from the power core of Jennerdyne's facility in the underbelly. Love the confidence, but before you pull the ripcord, I'm afraid I need to add a bit of a wrinkle. While you're inside Jennerdyne, I need you to plant a virus into their system. It's a simple side job that'll learn you some credits. I think you can handle it. Well, well, look at you. You're smarter than I thought. Jennerdyne has all sorts of tasty, valuable snacks in their databanks, and I want access. Here, take this micro drive and access the computer in Brayson Bayou's office. It'll do the rest on its own. And I suppose you're gonna head down to Jennerdyne and kick down the door? Wow, it's so simple. I can't believe I didn't think of that myself. Jennerdyne's got their place locked down tight. But as usual, the weak link comes from the people that work there. 
I recommend you start with Ayumi Komiko, an upper-level exec at Jennerdine. Get your hands on her security pass, and you'll have the run of the place. Ryujin Cloud doesn't mean shit at Jennerdine. So you're gonna have to deal with Komiko and potentially her boyfriend, Benjamin Bayou. Anyway, you can find Komiko at Euphorico. Talk to the owner of the place, Micah. She'll point you in the right direction. As for dealing with Komiko herself, she's got an office in the Trade Tower if you're looking for something incriminating. The rest is up to you, Rook. When you're done, come meet me at the VIP booth in the Astral Lounge so we can celebrate. Watch your step. Benjamin Bayou has eyes everywhere. It's a bad place for you. Yeah, what? Is this important? I'm really busy right now. Let me save you some time. If you're here for a job, we're not hiring. If you're here about the conduction grid tour, we shut it down a year ago. Good. If you were, you'd be the twelfth person I've turned away this year. What a waste. Look, I'm sorry if I'm blowing up at you, but I've got a ton of problems and no time to deal with them all. I'm afraid that things aren't going terribly well around here. I don't care if I'm allowed to or not. I'm happy to get this off my chest. The conduction grid went online almost 75 years ago. And since then, we haven't developed a single groundbreaking innovation. At this point, the money we're taking in as a power utility barely covers the waste that's going on in the research and development division. You'd think that, right? The problem is that Brayson Bayou, Administrator Bayou's brother, is currently heading up the R&D division. I swear to you, the man doesn't know the first thing about power systems or electromagnetic technology. I actually need our CEO's approval for that. And so far, it's been denied. Look, I'm running out of options. No one above me seems to care what's going on, but I'm willing to take a chance. I have a full report on Brayson that I want to send to Administrator Bayou, but I don't know if he can be trusted. What do you think I should do? You know what? You're absolutely right. I can't allow Brayson to run this company into the ground. Hey, look. Uh, thanks for helping me out with this. It's been on my mind for a long time. If there's anything else you need, any questions at all, feel free to ask. As long as it doesn't get me into serious trouble, ask away. Whoa. Okay, that's crossing the line. I can't discuss company matters like this. I'd like to tell you. I really would. Okay, listen. You didn't hear this from me, but I know she's up to something with Benjamin Bayou. He was in her office a few weeks ago, and they had some kind of shouting match. It got really heated until Bayou stormed out the door. I don't know what it was about, but I happen to know Miss Komiko keeps audio recordings of all her meetings in her safe. And before you ask, yes, I'll unlock it for you. Just don't tell anyone I helped, okay? Thanks for taking the time to talk. Get out of my face. If you want to gawk at something, take it to the Astral Lounge.
Are you supposed to be here? Welcome. Please, make yourself comfortable. I can offer you a drink, or perhaps you're here seeking access to our members' lounge, where you can enjoy your Aurora experience in peace. Customers choose our lounge because they desire a more relaxed and sedate journey as they experience the joy of Aurora. We have no blaring music, no crowds, no chaos. The mood here is specifically crafted to allow a full range of mindful self-exploration. Of course, of course. We have a full bar at your disposal with a range of delicious alcoholic beverages. If you desire access to the lounge, you can purchase admittance for a completely reasonable fee. Otherwise, you're welcome to relax, listen to our music, and perhaps enjoy a chimera. A wise choice. Here's your access key. Please let us know if anything in the lounge interferes with your comfort. If you need anything else, please, don't hesitate to ask. Enjoy your stay. Hey there. What can I get for you? Can't you see I'm busy, Estelle? What do you want? I've just Yeah? Yeah. What do you want? Uh, you must be zoned out of your mind, because there's no way anyone sober would say something like that. You're serious. Okay, then let me ask you a question, genius. Do you really think I'd risk my position as CEO of Jennerdyne for a few credits? I don't think so. The Crimson Fleet, huh? This is interesting. So tell me, what does Delgado need with my pastor Jennerdyne? So, let me get this straight. You want me to sneak you into Jennerdyne? so you can steal the only profitable piece of technology the company's come up with in decades. If you expect me to take a risk like that, then it's going to cost you some major credits. Do you have any idea what Benjamin Bayou would do to me if he found out we were even having this conversation? If I'm going to let you into Jennerdyne, I need a backup plan. Namely, money to get off world. Fast. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, you do. Short of taking it off my dead body, which would never happen thanks to my Sioga buddies here. You don't pay, you don't get the pass. You've got yourself a deal. Here, take this pass. It should get you through the storage room entry to the facility. I'm warning you, though. Once you're inside, you're trespassing in a high-security zone. That means they shoot on sight. Good luck. You're going to need it. Hey.
Oh, it's you. I was wondering how long it would take you to get down here. If you want the encryption cipher, you're welcome to it. I just don't want anyone getting hurt. No, no catch. I I'm not trying to trick you. You want the cipher? I it's yours. At this point, I'd do anything to get back at my brother. He deserves everything he's got coming to him. I think you could safely say that most of Neon would agree. You know, I've spent my entire life living in Ben's shadow. Everything always works out for him. While, I, while I've been bouncing from one job to the next, barely keeping afloat. And all the while, he laughs at me behind my back. <laughs> Thinks it's hilarious to make fun of his, his stupid brother. Like I wouldn't eventually find out. Yeah. That would be nice. You know what? I am sick to death of being pushed around. It's my turn to take control for once. The passcode for my terminal is GEN-41A18. That should give you access to the cipher and whatever else you need. I'm getting out of here while I still can. After you're done, I suggest you do the same. Feels good to be in control for a change. you are. What kept you? I believe we have a lot to discuss. It's obvious you're here to meet someone. Fortunately for them, they rented this VIP room under a false name. I assume that same someone provided you with that clever little virus you installed into Genodyne systems. Well, yes. You didn't think your little foray into Genodyne would go completely undetected, did you? All too well. You know, I should give credit where it's due. That virus is quite impressive. It will cost me tens of thousands of credits to remove. That's the last time I'll ever take the Crimson Fleet's capabilities for granted. Probably. But do you want to know why that's not going to happen? It's because I don't negotiate with pirates. They don't understand commitments or contracts. How to get the deal done with finesse. No. For your kind, it's only brute force and violence. Shoot first, take whatever you want, and ask questions later. That's not how I do business. It may seem that way, but for every rival I've had thrown into the ocean, I've made two times as many legitimate deals. Look, I'm not here to debate. I'm here to make an offer. All you have to do is tell me who's profiting from the virus you've uploaded. In return, I'll let you leave the city alive. Brayson? Interesting. And here I thought my dear brother was simply a coward. Hmm. Perhaps I've misjudged Brayson. No matter. I'll deal with him soon enough. So, I assume this concludes our little arrangement, and you'll be leaving our fair city. Oh, when you get back to the Key, be certain to give Neva and Delgado my warmest regard.
Woodside's a bad place for tourists these days. Glad you're back. Sorry about the whole Benjamin Bay you think at the Astral Lounge, but I didn't have much of a choice. Can you believe the nerve of that smug son of a bitch? The man is priceless. So I've heard. Throwing Brayson under the bus like that. Ouch. That might help you sleep at night but doesn't do me a hell of a lot of good. Since Bayou flagged the virus, I can't risk accessing the system now. All that work I did trying to crack Jennerdine is gone. Now I'm in a bit of a bind. The prep work for this job put me in deep for a bunch of cash and I have no way to pay it all back. <laughs> That's exactly what I had in mind. I guess you aren't such a rook after all. How much uh, are you willing to part with? This is perfect. It will definitely help. Thank you. All right, I guess we're done here. Tell Delgado if he ever needs me for anything else. I've still got his back. And hey, you won't be hearing Rook from me anymore. As far as I'm concerned, you're one of us now. Lifeblood of the fleet. If anyone tries to tell you otherwise, you send him to talk to me. Tell Neva she still owes me a drink for our poker game. All hell's breaking loose, Rook. Delgado needs you in the repair bay with Jazz as soon as possible. Oh, that's hilarious. You're a real comedian, you know that? Now get your ass to the repair bay. Go! Too many missions, not enough time. You are sure we will have those defense batteries up and running? No, 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 no. I'm not sure. They're in bad shape, Del. Really bad shape. I I'm already using duct tape and spit to keep the station from falling apart. You want me to pull a rabbit out of my hat? I don't want to hear excuses. I want to hear that it's going to be fixed. Period. Get it done. All right, all right. I'm on it. You want to quit standing there and hand over the conduction grid data? Ah, perfect. I'll take that. <laughs> Dependable as always. Unlike some people we know. Oh, that's real funny. All right, listen up, because I don't want to repeat this twice. We've gotten word that UC Sysdef is massing somewhere nearby for an attack on the key. While we prepare for their arrival, I want you to head straight for Bannock 4 and bring Crix's legacy home. Lay it out, Jess. All right, first things first. I'm gonna upload this data you snagged from Jennerdyne into the Keys databanks. All you need to do is build and then install a conduction grid module onto your ship. Oh, and if you haven't already, you'll need the comm spike module installed as well. Once your ship is ready, jump out to Bannock 4, board the Legacy, and bring us the cash. Of course there's a catch. What, you thought this would be easy? After you board the Legacy, be on the lookout for two transfer modules. They're special keys that allow access to the ship's vault. Once you locate the vault's control center, hook up the data core I'm gonna give you, and download everything they've got. 
And before you get any bright ideas, like running off with the money, that currency is going to be heavily encrypted. Only a genius like Shinya will be able to crack that encryption. So bring it back here right away. Which is exactly why you need to get there first. And we can't let it fall into their hands. Look, I'm going to make this real simple for you. If that money ends up anywhere but the key, I will hunt you down and pry it out of your dead hands myself. Now get moving. Now get your ass to Bannock 4. Thanks I for making me look good. Batteries online, so I would have had to back. kill you. Otherwise. Not a problem. Conduction grid data is all set up in the system, so it should be an easy install. I bet you would. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's take a look. What did you do? The only thing I could. I could get. Yeah? Got mixed feelings about my last job.
I haven't seen my family in a while. All support ships have arrived, Commander. Good. After we're done here, arrange a briefly. I want all of their seals over here as soon as possible. Yes, sir. There you are. Where have you been? If I were you, I'd check my tone. I'm in no mood. I've received the reports about your little foray into Genadyne. Last piece of the puzzle before you go after Crix's legacy. Which means it's time to put all the cards on the table and prepare to attack the key. Good. The more confusion and panic we cause, the more damage we can potentially inflict. Before you jump to Bannock 4, I need to make one thing abundantly clear. The credits from that Gal Bank transport cannot reach the fleet. You have to bring them here at all costs. If Delgado gains access to those resources, we might be touching off a battle we can't possibly win. We've been monitoring the Crimson Fleet's comm chatter and the Crick system. They're gathering allies by making promises based on your success. As much as I hate to admit it, you see Sis Death won't stand a chance. The fleet will become stronger and more unified than ever. I've always known that when it came down to it, you'd do the right thing. All right, I guess this is it. Do whatever prep you need to do aboard the Vigilance, and then head out to Bannock 4. When you return here with Crix's legacy, we'll begin the attack. Good luck. Stay focused and be careful out there. Has something on your mind? Hmm. Glad to hear it. Let's see what you got. Perfect. Taking her out of the running is going to seriously damage the Crimson Fleet's hold on Neon. Even better, that's one less fleet captain and one less ship to worry about. Any other fragments? Benjamin Bayou, pride of the Free Star Collective. The authorities there have been trying to nail him for a long time. Bringing us proof that he's been manipulating Jennerdyne from the shadows is pretty tasty stuff. The FC will pay dearly for this. Good job. Anything else? Perfect. Komiko's wanted for corporate violations in UC territory. But having concrete evidence means we extradite her and nail her to the wall. I'm sure we can arrange a prisoner trade with the Freestar Collective. Make it beneficial for both interested parties. That it? All right. Keep up the good work. See you soon.
Personal communication detected. Automated recording system at crew recording initiated. Well now, let's see. Crew recording initiated. Son of a bitch! Nothing. Complete waste of time. I've tried everything I can possibly think of and I end up right where I started. Oh, here I thought I was so clever. Thought I had it all figured out. First, fix my ship and get the prototype shielding back online. Second, shunt the power from the cred tank array back to the system to drain the credits. And then third, haul ass back to my ship before the EM field rips apart the legacy. Three easy steps, right? Only problem is, I'm stuck at step one. Every system on my ship is dead, and there's nothing aboard this ship to use for repairs. I can't believe I came all this way just to end up stuck here like the poor bastards who ran this ship.
up, sir. Get the bogey in my sight. Everyone's saying this is it. Final battle. The fleet have done a lot of harm. Now we bring the harm. Fleet started this war. My God. Is that it? Is that Crix's legacy? <sighs> Amazing. Ensign, take this and enter it into the data core analyzer. I'm on it, sir. You see, Lieutenant? I told you he wouldn't <laughs> let us down. I have to admit, I'm impressed. Encrypted or not, it's quite a lot of money to be carrying around. The temptation must have been excruciating. Well, you came through. Now, on to other more pressing matters. We received confirmation that the fleet ships were scouts sent to probe our defenses. Unfortunately, one of them grabbed, jumped away before you arrived. Which means that Delgado will have the Crimson Fleet prepping defenses of its own. That's the plan. Lieutenant, if you wouldn't mind explaining our strategy. Yes, sir. The Vigilance is equipped with the latest in hyper-resistant shielding, making it the only ship that can safely approach the key. The catch is that the key has access to three orbital defensive batteries that can fire electromagnetic energy. One hit, and we lose those fancy shields. Our mission is to take out those batteries. In fact, I'll be personally leading the assault on Battery Alpha. I need you to be my support. But you won't be alone. This is where all your hard work gathering evidence pays off. Based on what we sent them, the leadership at Mass granted us an additional squadron. I've dispatched those ships to Battery Gamma. After we take out Alpha and Beta ourselves, we'll move to assist them. Ideally, we'd have enough to take on all three at once. But this will have to do. We've also given you a call sign, Renegade, to help coordinate our movements during the attack. Once those batteries are destroyed, you board the key and bring Delgado to justice. You won't come quietly. You do what you have to do. I knew we could count on your support. Well, this is it. After <coughs> years of planning, it all comes down to this moment. All my hopes and my best wishes go with you. Good luck.
You're gonna pay for that! Go! 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 Hey! You did this to me. I can decrypt and re-encode thousands of credits in seconds, but something as simple as this, I didn't see it coming. Not in the slightest. And now because of you, my bomb's been activated. Which means I'm as good as dead. Forgive me if I don't take you at your word since you've been lying to me from the very beginning. I've paid you well, treated you with respect, and kept trouble off your back more than a few times. Look me in the eye and tell me why you've allowed this to happen to me. You owe me that much. No, but had you given me warning, I could have started researching a way to escape this place, at least had a chance. Well, now that you're here, I don't expect that you'll stay and watch my rather spectacular ending. So why don't you just get out of my sight and let me die in peace? After everything I just said, you'd still be willing to help me. I must be a complete fool. Because even though it makes no sense, I believe you. The only way to deactivate the bomb is through Delgado's computer and operations. You'll probably need his ID to get in. I don't know why you're helping me, but I sincerely hope this isn't another one of your tricks.
Came back to finish the job personally? Talk sense into me? You're the one who's lost their mind. What the hell happened to you? You had Krix's legacy in your hands, and you gave it away. For what? For honor? Justice? Looking out for number one, huh? So you did pick up some of my dirty habits. Maybe I taught you too well. You know, when we were on Suarov, I saw the potential for you to become a badass pirate. One of the best. And now you suddenly expect me to believe I have been fooled the entire time? That this was some kind of elaborate game you have been playing? No. No way. For once in your life, be honest with me. Admit that you were tempted. Well, at least we know you are still human. It is obvious that no matter what I say, you have no intention of honoring our pact. You clearly never did. I have already locked down the key and set its reactors to overload. Soon, you, me, and everyone near this station are going to be vaporized. Let's see how far that loyalty to Sistef takes you now. And spend the rest of my life in the brig without a credit to my name? Why would I do that? And I suppose you want me to think it ends outside a prison cell and not in. Still, a prison door opens, just like any other. As is every member of the fleet. And if I give them all one more day, maybe we make it out of this. They might. And if they do, I would just be tying up their loose ends, including you. If so, letting you live might afford me some small victory. Fine. You win. Standing down the reactors. With the legacy gone, we're dead in the water anyway. But before you have Ikan to lock me up, I'm gonna leave you with some parting words. Whether you know it or not, you're damn good at being a pirate. It's in your blood. One of these days, that's all gonna hit you. And I'll be waiting for you in my cell to tell you I told you so.
Okay, hello. Okay, hello. Howdy. Impressive flying, kid. You were in your wings today. Thank you, sir. I was just trying to do my part. Great job. I believe congratulations are in order. With this decisive blow, the end of the Crimson Fleet is all but assured. But as much as I'd like to begin this celebration, Technically, we're still in the process of wrapping up the operation. On that note, Lieutenant, what do you have for me? Reports are coming in right now, Commander. Delgado and Shinya Voss have been taken into custody. Also, we've transferred personnel to the Key to secure the location until the United Colonies decides what they want to do with the station. And what about Neva Mora? According to our reports, Neva led the strike force that attacked the Vigilance. Unfortunately, that was the last we saw of her. It looks like she managed to escape. We don't know her current whereabouts, but I have our operations team looking into it. That's fine. Overall, excellent news, Lieutenant. I have to admit, for the first time in seven years, I don't know what to say. About you, I know that was difficult. You hanging in there? You should be. What you've done to serve the UC in this short amount of time is more than most people could hope to do in their entire lives. If Mast isn't already printing up a batch of recruitment posters with your face on them, they should be. I've twisted arms and cashed in some favors at Mast. I wanted to make sure you got a share of the money you recovered from the legacy. Call it a reward, a token of appreciation, whatever the hell you want. But you've absolutely earned every credit. Bah, the hell with that. Enjoy the reward for once. You deserve it. Commander, are you sure you didn't hit your head during the battle? Decorum, Lieutenant? Damn, I'm going to be really sorry to see you go. You've really become an important part of our team. It won't be the same around here without you. Although, if you feel like staying aboard, I'm sure I could give you access to the SysDef mission board. That is, if... You can stand spending another minute with us on the Vigilance. Excellent. I'm happy we haven't somehow frightened you away. Anyway, enough talk. You've earned a break, and I'm sure you wish to celebrate. Here's your promised reward. Wherever you might find yourself, my best wishes travel with you. What can I do for you? Years ago, the, the mission board should provide you with any intel on fleet activity. I've thought about this day for a long time. Nice work. Let me take a look. <laughs> That's a hell of a story. I still can't believe Crix ended up being marooned on the legacy. All that wealth, and the only thing he could do was stare at it. Can you imagine? I almost feel bad for him. I must have driven the guy crazy. That it? Okay, fine, fine. I know there's more out there, so keep on it. Not really, no. I've learned to keep my personal experiences separate from the job. Yeah, maybe. No, no, it, it's 
not really an appropriate time to be going over my private life. There are much more important things to be done. Let's just stick to the job at hand and concentrate on the mission. But, uh, maybe we can talk about it some other time, okay? You're not gonna let this go, are you? Why do you care so much about my past? I suppose that's fair. Though I'm not sure you're gonna like what you find out. Would it shock you to learn that I spent some time in prison? <laughs> I suppose that makes me a hypocrite. Oh, does it now? Was I giving off some kind of ex-con sort of vibe? Well, give me a chance to explain. I grew up in the well in New Atlantis. Parents made barely enough money to keep the lights on in our apartment. After I dropped out of school, they begged for me to look for work. But I realized it was a lot easier to simply take whatever I wanted instead. A year after that, I'm a career criminal with UC security breathing down my neck and my parents kicking me out of the house. That's just it though. I was having the time of my life earning way more than I needed to simply get by and loving every minute of it. Back then, if you would have told me one day I'd be wearing this uniform, I'd have said you were out of your mind. Hmm, very funny. And not even relatively close. Let's just say the years after my time in the well were filled with highs and lows. Look, the point is that I felt you deserved to know a bit about my past. To know where my anger towards the fleet comes from. <laughs> Longer than you can possibly imagine. Well, <laughs> I think you've had enough for now. <laughs> you get the point. Let's get back to it before Keyboy writes us a citation for loitering. Yeah. I figured it was only a matter of time before this came up. The reason I didn't bring up the Crimson Fleet is, well, I was one of them. It's something I'm not exactly proud of. Right, no one else but you would understand what I've gone through. It's been a long and difficult road. I was recruited out of New Atlantis by Neva Mora. She said I was making a name for myself, and it caught the fleet's attention. I was thrilled. It was a chance at bigger and better scores and gave me a ticket off world. Why the heck would I say no? I even if I had, I was ignoring the potential repercussions. They took me in. Delgado ran me through the paces on Suvorov, and before I knew it, I was part of the team. <laughs> Now I was making some serious money. An apartment I boasted about in New Atlantis became a joke. I even made enough to buy my own ship. I would have agreed with you back then, but when I think about it, I feel like I'm living my best life right now. Everything changed thanks to Commander Akande. The man basically saved my life. I owe him everything. You don't even know the half of it. Look, um... I've already said too much. I promised Commander Akande I wouldn't talk to anyone about this. All you need to take away is that I've literally walked a mile in your shoes, and I appreciate the risks that you're taking. Carry through with this mission. I promise you I'll be there every step of the way. I suppose... Though the commander won't be thrilled that I told you, so keep it to yourself. So, when I was running with the Crimson Fleet, I put together a hell of a crew. Six of the toughest pirates I could find. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't take my eyes off of any of them for even a second. Imagine trying to get some shut-eye on a ship like that. Didn't sleep much, I can assure you. My first mate was Arya Fikes, the toughest of the bunch. The only problem was that she had a hell of a temper. The smallest things could just set her off, and believe me, 
She took a while to cool down. Well, the positives outweighed the negatives, at first. Anyway, there was this one particular incident where we had a hot tip on a freighter supposedly running heavy with ore. The second we dropped out of grav space, we knew it was a trap. We'd been set up, and the UC was waiting for us. Somehow we managed to take out all of their attack ships. I grabbed Arya and we boarded the freighter. It wasn't brave. It was arrogant. We fought our way to the bridge and the crew surrendered. That's when the vigilance arrived. I watched it vaporize my ship and crew in seconds. Commander Akande radioed over for us to give up, turn ourselves in. Arya went wild. Said she'd start executing crew if they didn't let us leave. The commander tried to talk some sense into her, but she was too far gone. I knew right then she'd rather die than surrender. You can't even imagine. Commander Akande promised to be lenient if we let the crew go. When we didn't reply, he sent over a ship to board us. I saw Arya put her gun to one of the hostages' heads. And saw that look in her eye. I could actually see her squeezing the trigger. Next thing I knew, a shot rang out. I'll never forget that look on Arya's face as she fell to the ground with the wound in her chest. Looked down at the gun in my hand like it belonged to someone else. I... I still don't know why I did it. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> I hope to God we're both right. Long story short, I spent a year in jail, then Keepway recruited me. I guess he saw something in me, a desire to turn my life around. I busted my ass to get where I am today, first mate of the Vigilance. Ironic I'd end up in Arya's position, don't you think? It took a while, and a lot of reflection, but I know he made the right choice. Had I continued down the road I was traveling back then, we wouldn't be speaking right now. I owe everything to Commander Akande for giving me a second chance. Mast will have the ultimate say, but we petitioned to have it refurbished for SysDef use. But first, we'll need to perform an audit of the key's overall condition. Most of the repairs done to the station weren't exactly up to standard. If the site is deemed not up to code, we're better off destroying it. That would also have political value, given the embarrassing history behind it. For now, we have a strike team dedicated to sweeping the area for explosives. Once they give the all clear, forensics will come in to gather evidence. After that's done, then we'll start the audit of the station's condition. <laughs> it's a process. We'll be here if you need us. We're back. Anything to report? We did the galaxy a huge favor by ending the... <laughs> Reclaiming the key was a long time coming.
I pride myself on knowing everyone on this world, and I don't know you. You're with the collection team, then, I presume. Either that, or you're one deeply unlucky trespasser. Vanguard, eh? Brief said you were an... eclectic group. You must have really shined out on the fringe to get assigned a task like this. Ah, then this must be the rest of your outfit. Commander Hatoum, I... No need for introductions, Major Sinan. Dr. Walker, your reputations precede you. As does the urgency of your mission, so I'll get to it. Now, Londinian is one of the most dangerous places in the Milky Way. It's with good reason my soldiers and I do everything we can to avoid entering the city. Terramorphs are omnipresent, and the structural damage left behind when... when Major Sanon's father bombed its spaceport has turned large swathes of the metropolis into a decaying labyrinth. As such, we'll be providing you all with gear, information, and uploading municipal unlock codes to your robot. Every tool you could need to succeed out there. Except one. Once you're on the other side of those barriers, you will be on your own. If you get into trouble, my people will not be coming. Do we understand each other? Precisely. I'll leave you to your preparations, then. You can find your equipment in our armory, base of the tower just outside. And I do believe there's someone waiting for you there, Captain. Now, once you're outside the base, it's my personal suggestion you make a beeline to the nearby Aceli's plant. It contains one of our field caches. Though, I can't guarantee it won't contain anything else. I hope you all find what you're looking for out there. Robot, you're coming with me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Commander. Percival, you all set to hook into their comms tower? Should only take a few minutes. Let's get this done and get the hell out of here. Percival will be scanning the city for our samples from here. When he finds one, he'll transmit the coordinates to us out in the field. All right. Head over to the armory and gear up. Once you're done, we'll meet by the entrance to the city. Excuse me. You match our description. The Vanguard captain? The cabinet wanted you to have something. Make sure you had the best tools for the task at hand. Now, if you'll excuse me. Heard you're going out there willingly. Damn! Transfers complete. All set on your gear? You... Are you ready to do this? That's... That's damn right we are. Come on. Let's get out there. Kaiser? Percival, everything green on your ends? I am ready. Personal comm should be routed through Kaiser now. You copy that? Processing plan. Cash with some goodies is towards the rear of the facility. 
Close enough for you to dial in the location of those samples from here? Yes. They're faint. But I'm detecting multiple valid signatures. I have restored power to the containers. Jackpot! Get down there and collect as many as you can. Kaiser, this flora, this is Lazarus plant, isn't it? You know, no one even realized it was a living thing until someone got it under a microscope and saw it had cells. Can't be cultivated anywhere but Londinian. Real marble. All these leeches. What's keeping you things warm? God, look at it. A Lazarus in bloom. You know, we might be some of the only... What's... What's happening? Captain, have you seen this? Leeches are terramorphs. You just saw that, right? You would tell me if I was losing my mind. That heat leech became a terramorph. The pests that have snuck onto every planet are baby terramorphs. Heat leeches hide out in ships, sneak away after landing, and then with time they transform. We. We just found out how terramorphs move between planets. Pretty Major is right. But if what we just saw, if that's possible... The Lazarus plant. It's clearly an accelerant for the terramorph, a heat leech transformation process. Make one into the other in an instant. But that means if anyone knew about this, they could trigger a terramorph spawning. You could sneak a leech into a city, or even multiple leeches, into a place like New Atlantis. Good God. The attack on New Atlantis, does this... 
Could someone have set that up? But first, you'd have to know the truth about all this. Well, we're never gonna know if you don't catch that thing. Get after it! We may proceed. Go! understand what it is we just stumbled on here. Exactly. Someone saw the Lazarus plant in action and used it to trigger the attacks. Makes some sense, actually. Tau Ceti was likely their first test, someplace remote where no one would question a few settlers going missing. Ensure the big show, the attack on New Atlantis, would be a success. And the timing of that one. It couldn't have been just luck that it happened right when we were asking the Cabinet to do something about the Terramorphs. These attacks. I think someone planned them to set all this in motion. They certainly were. But having this answer, well, it raises a couple big questions. Who could pull something like this off? And why? Hmm. That's a good point. An accusation this consequential needs evidence to back it up. Not just conjecture. Let's save the discussion for when you all aren't standing in the universe's closest equivalent to hell frozen over. If we're gonna do anything to prevent more Terramorph attacks, Human cause or otherwise, we need that final sample. Roger that. Kaiser, get us into the spaceport. The entrance is this way. Transcription 
complete. Physical copy available. An invisible weapon. He knew. He knew about the Lazarus plant. Grab that recording. We... We should talk. Hey, Victus. He destroyed this place. Killed these people to keep what he knew about the Lazarus plan and the terror morphs and all this a secret. Didn't he? He saw the potential of the plant as a weapon and hid it away. He killed those people. Condemned this city to keep them from sharing what they might have seen. He was a was yes exactly what we all thought he was but I guess I guess that's just another part of his sick legacy now he thought he was protecting us all taking the secret to his grave only he didn't succeed now someone else knows about the Lazarus plant and is using it exactly how he feared Right. Settled systems are counting on us. the underworld got pretty frantic on the comms towards the end there but it sounded like this was a success got everything we need to put this plan in motion ah best place for him now my connection might have gotten a bit fuzzy there but do I have it right that Vey Victus knew about this damn plant 
That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Guess the old Admiral must have told someone what he learned. Even he's not clever enough to pull off an attack like that from the great beyond. <laughs> That's putting it lightly. But it's clear someone knows about the plant and realized what ends it could be put towards. Captain, we need to get these samples back to the lab and verify we'll be able to handle cleaning up the leeches as well as the terramorphs. But in the interim, do you think you could look into what we uncovered? See if you can turn up any information on who might have committed the attacks? If it were me, I'd start at the scene of the crime. New Atlantis. Thank you, Captain. Once you finish your investigation, we'll meet you outside the cabinet chambers. They're gonna want to hear this. Take care of yourself. No telling who might be involved. falling into the wrong hands. So I ordered the bombing of the Londinian. 
these terramorph outbreak and sealing away knowledge of the plant's potential. Easy to say now, but at the time, I didn't know the Lazarus plant couldn't be plucked from the ground and used to cause even more death. I wasn't going to allow another dangerous variable to be added to an already catastrophic war. But then, as the war ended, my trial, my execution, I made a decision. After all, I'd given everything for the colonies. My life as I knew it included. And what did I get in return? Was there any effort by the UC to protect my legacy? My daughter's legacy? No. We were sacrificed when all we did was serve. So I kept what I'd learned and arranged the attacks to set things right again. My daughter. She becomes a hero. I become a trusted advisor, having found Kaiser, the research team, and cement my new position of influence when I hand them the name of the person responsible for the attack on New Atlantis. The dear departed Dr. Reginald Orlais, the associate who aided me all these years, and whom I always slated to take the fall. What luck he was stopped dead before he could hurt anyone else. His decades on the run brought to an end by another unlikely hero. You. There are no heroes without a villain. I simply arranged the opportunity for us to overcome one and become the other. And we all benefited. It's why I had our lays reprogram Kaiser. Had that old machine guide you to where I found the plant all those years ago. I went to great lengths to ensure your and Hadrian's success. And look at the results. I know for a fact the Cabinet's planning to honor both you and Hadrian once this is all done. Isn't that preferable to languishing away in obscurity? Running jobs on the tail end of nowhere for the Vanguard? With only the vague hopes of perhaps earning the right to buy a home in the well someday. You're being honored only because I arranged the situations where it could happen. Be grateful, and let's not forget the importance of our actual endgame. Eliminating the Terramorphs, securing knowledge of the Lazarus plant. What we've set in motion is going to protect thousands, maybe millions of lives. I'm simply requesting one more life be protected. Mine. I've already sent along the evidence of Orlaza's role in the attacks to the Cabinet leaving out my own involvement. All I ask is that you confirm as much to the cabinet. Tell them that it was our lays and our lays alone. After all, I do still have a long list of threats to the UC. This needn't be the end of our good works together. That is a pity, Captain. But, I'm in no position to negotiate. Though we needn't be enemies, you and I, just think about the opportunity I've provided here. There are more on the horizon, if you do the right thing. Perfect timing. We just got in. So on our end, good news. The Microbe and the Aceles are both as effective against heat leeches as they are against Terramorphs. Means either plan should work for clearing those critters off our worlds. 
Considering what the Lazarus plant is capable of, I don't think we can deal with those things fast enough. I already sent along info to the cabinet to get them up to speed. So what about your end? Did you find anything? Any leads on who might have committed the attacks? That seems unlikely, considering he's been dust for about 20 years. I'm sure the captain just misspoke. Right? No, no, that's impossible. He's gone. My father is dead. Good God, you're not kidding. Alive. Bay Victus is alive? How... How did you find him? Wait. You knew he was alive and didn't tell us? You were sworn to... You... You swore. You were just doing your duty, weren't you? Yeah, I guess I, of all people, should know what a burden that can be. Doesn't mean I'm not mad. But I guess you letting us know late is preferable to never. Now at least we can inform the cabinet and let them deal with him. Exactly. The people he harmed deserve justice. But now... Now I guess we've got our answer. Nothing left to do but put it all in front of the cabinet. Any last things we needed to discuss? This might be our last opportunity to talk things through before the cabinet weighs in on a decision regarding the Terramorphs. Then here we go. Welcome back, all of you. I wish we were meeting under better circumstances. But according to Hadrian's report, and the second one I just received, it seems the Terramorph attack on New Atlantis was no random occurrence, but a planned strike. Is what I'm reading here true? My god. An attack? Using Terramorphs? How is that possible? You will all receive a full briefing once we're done here. So then, is what the second report claims correct? Did Reginald Orlais commit these attacks, Captain? Orlais? It's true, ma'am. I heard the recording myself. My father figured out how to use Terramorphs as weapons. He did what? That... that... that's impossible. He doesn't have the kind of access to... Clearly, he made his own access, Chief Sarkin. Madam President, I have been saying for years that not dealing with that man was going to end in tragedy. Enough! I hope everyone here understands that what has just been shared is a state secret of the highest order. This information does not leave this room. Now, that's quite the accusation you're leveling, considering Francois Sanon has not left containment for the better part of two decades. You have evidence to back this up? It just transformed a terramorph out of thin air. An invisible weapon. No planet would be safe. Heavens help us. I is that actually him? I'd know that voice anywhere. That's Francois. He knew they could do this. And said nothing. He's a sociopath. Plain and simple, ma'am. Officer, please collect that recording. Yes, ma'am. Begging your pardon, Captain? We'll, of course, be launching a full investigation into how this could have happened. Though I have little doubt the Admiral will be quick to share all he knows on the subject once confronted with that recording. Chief Yassine, can you send one of your interrogators to have a little chat with the Admiral? I'll issue the order immediately. Good. Combined with everything else you all have uncovered. Well, I don't think the United Colonies can thank you enough. We failed the people of the Colonies by not dealing with Vay Victus sooner. I intend to rectify that mistake immediately. 
I'm inclined to agree, Captain. Now, with our villain unmasked, we can attend to the other matters at hand. With the threads you've brought together here, the Lazarus plant, the attacks, the heat leeches, the three of you have likely spared thousands of lives, but it now falls to the cabinet to ensure this can never happen again. As such, the cabinet will be securing the Lazarus plant on Londinian. All materials related to the plant will be classified to ensure no one else learns its true nature. A sound decision, Madam President. Tell the Freestar Collective. Why? So they have another tool to utilize against us? I'm in agreement. I fail to see the value here. That is an interesting idea. A grand gesture to further display this cabinet doesn't think like those of the past. The observers on Mars have proven such a gesture can bear fruit. So, you want us to make nice with the Collective by sharing our state secrets? No, I want us to display plainly the UC's actual intentions, that the plant will never be used as a weapon again. Huh. That does sound worthwhile, Chief Kalkarni. Very well. We'll get the Collective involved in the management. Thank you for the suggestion, Captain. So then, to our final topic. The Cabinet has agreed to implement a plan that will deal with the Terramorph, and now also Heat Leech presence on human worlds. In fact, we've already begun enacting measures to check all UC ports and settlements for undiscovered nests. But we all understand this is only a partial solution. The project we're embarking on will be a long and difficult one. So our first step must be deciding how exactly this all will be handled. Madam President, this microbe is clearly too much of a risk. The Asili's are the safer approach. To someone with limited knowledge of biology, perhaps? The technology behind the microbe is solved science, Madam President. It isn't dangerous. Using it to wipe out the Terramorphs would be the quickest path to protecting humanity. And fast results always lead to the best outcomes, don't they? As you can see, there remains debate among the Cabinet. We were hoping your group might issue a recommendation. Major? We've had a few discussions, but our group is similarly split. Only the Captain has yet to weigh in. I see. Captain, I know this may not be your area of expertise, but we'd like to know your take on the matter. I'm in full agreement. No need be delving into unpredictable sciences. And Major Sinan? Dr. Walker, you'd find this acceptable? We trust the Captain's judgment. Then the matter is settled. We'll begin the process immediately. Today, Marks day one for the United Colonies Terramorph Management Division, making you three the founding members of the TMD. As befits such a group, the Cabinet wanted to display its gratitude. Today, we will be adding three new Class One citizens to our ranks. Class One? For the three of us? Are you joking? What he means to say is... Thank you, ma'am. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. You all have earned it. Now, there's much to be done. Major Sinan, Dr. Walker, I hope you two are willing to continue your efforts spearheading the TMD's research on Mars. We'd be honored, ma'am. As for you, Captain, the Vanguard will be providing much of the on-the-ground support for the TMD. As a member of both the Vanguard and the TMD, I believe you'll have your pick of duties. Speak to your commander, Tuala, if I recall correctly. He should be able to provide you with assignments going forward, plus help you collect the benefits that come with being named Class One. On behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our sincerest gratitude. This meeting is adjourned.
this shift doesn't end soon, my man is not gonna be happy. Well, well, I've gotta say, this is a first. I've never had a class one citizen in my ranks before. Congratulations, Captain. No need to thank me. You brought this all on yourself. I've already gone ahead and processed your class one benefits. All UC goods and services should now have a thanks for protecting the colonies discount. And the credits should be in your accounts now. About to get into your penthouse, you'll have to pay a visit to the Affilion Realty Office. They should be able to grant you access. Higher-ups wanted to make sure you know how much they appreciate what you've done. But, with all that squared, it's time to get you a new assignment. There are your standard Vanguard missions, putting those pilot skills to use defending UC space. Or you could help the TMD in cleaning up Terramorphs. Oh, and I got a request from Dr. Walker. Wanted your help collecting biological samples to keep an eye out for any, uh, new alien threats on the horizon. Any of those missions call to you? Any chance to bag some bugs, right? Well, I can provide. Let me just check my logs. Okay. These coordinates should get you to your first target. There. These missions are straightforward. Proceed to the location, kill the critter before it can do any more harm. Just be smart out there. Don't want you getting banged up too bad. Well, well. If it isn't the United Colony's newest Class 1 citizen, you've made quite a name for yourself in New Atlantis. In fact, the higher-ups want to thank you for your dedicated service by giving you one of the nicest pieces of real estate in the city. It's a premium penthouse at the top of Mercury Tower. Best location in New Atlantis, in my professional opinion. What do you say? It'll just take a second to get you registered as the owner. Great! You're in for a real treat. It's one of my favorite apartments in the city. Okay, you're all set. Your new home's located in Mercury Tower in the residential district. You'll love the place. It has a gorgeous floor plan and an unbeatable view of the city. <laughs> now that you're an owner, I'm sure I'll be seeing you around town.
moment, Captain. Uh, still got one.
file says you have a military background. Well, don't embarrass your old outfit. Hi. If you have a new story for me, I'm very happy to... What a sordid mess. We've got some other sources we've been interviewing, but I'd love to get your take on the record. So there was a mercenary company, the first, and they were involved in taking farmlands from Freestar Collective families. Extortion, death threats, murder, all of it. Is that right? I genuinely don't know how people like that can live with themselves. So all of that? Terrible. But Ron Hope, the Ron Hope, was involved with it at the highest level. All of that suffering was a plot to save Hope Tech from going under using the side effects of a fertilizer he developed. Let me be blunt. The other sources say you killed Ron Hope. Is that correct? And all that money didn't help in the end. After all of that, the future of Hope Tech is an open question. Their stock has already taken a beating. Not sure if it's going to go into freefall. Any comment? For what it's worth, I'm rooting for them too. Thanks. If you listen to the news, you'll definitely hear this. And, uh, maybe try not to ice any more CEOs. Just a thought. My source is back, here to rep- Really? To say you have my undivided attention is an understatement. A lot of people were there. The accounts we've got were chaotic. What was your role in that? Sounds like maybe you're being modest. Security isn't exactly trained for that scenario, but all right. The whole city is still on edge over the attack. We were fortunate, damn fortunate. That casualties were so low. What was it like in the thick of things? Mm, pure instinct, huh? It sounds like New Atlantis, heck the whole you see, owes you a great debt. Any closing comments? I already have a good story here. That's a mouthful. A thankful you guys are around mouthful. Hey, Constellation? from all of us that live here. Thanks. We use the word hero a lot in news, but you really are one. Your stories are a big hit. Of course you are. Why wouldn't you be? I swear you're either a trouble magnet or something. So, Sista finally, and against all odds, really triumphed against the Crimson Fleet. In their own backyard, no less. How were you involved? So what do you do for an encore? <laughs> so, the Vigilants went toe-to-toe -to -toe with everything the Crimson Fleet could throw at them. And somehow, almost miraculously, they captured the key. The key itself. I've confirmed that with many sources. Anything to add? Someone seriously owes you a beer. Hell, a keg. You have to feel good about how everything turned out. Commander Ikande is being hailed a hero, and Sisdef's popularity is at an all-time high. Your thoughts? That's a common refrain. He was respected before this, but now? And that's all I need. You really do lead an extraordinary life. And as a, well, possibly embarrassing personal note, thank God for you. When you first walked into my office, I had no idea you would be at the center of so much. And I get the feeling you're not sharing everything. I might surprise you, but I understand. I talked with the editor, and he authorized a special bonus for someone who's worked with us so long. And maybe one day, years from now, you can fill me in on the stories you didn't want broadcast. Take care, Constellation.
Captain, I believe your ship will perform more efficiently. Gave up my room in the lodge, so been poring over the charts. I don't want to hear any complaints. Howdy. As vital, excellent. All right, Nava went for it, so the plan's a go. The Crimson Fleet is gonna do a quick smash and grab on Hope Town. To get started, I need a layout of the settlement. Don't leave anything out. I want every guard patrol, junction box, mark down everything. When it's go time, I'm gonna need some kind of distraction. Maybe set off a mining charge. Send in our 
warships, so that should give you plenty of time to get ready. All right, you wanted to be part of the no, fleet. This could be your ticket. Just don't screw it all up. Did you get it? Let me see. Nice. <laughs> Thanks again. I hope... Hey, uh, wanna help me out? Oh, God! Uh, track down another volume of Dragon Star Force. <laughs> oh, uh, see you later, I, I guess. Did you know they filmed... Hey, I found the next book in the series. Oh, this means a lot. We'll go. We'll go. Just need to find a time. Kate, hold up! So, Henry's new batch. How'd it go over? It's bad, Eloise. Really bad. You should have seen Sam's face when he drank it. It was like he was sucking a lemon. Gladys literally gagged. Everyone's been talking about it. What? That, that's terrible. I had to give them all free burgers to smooth things over. Hello. I took all of Henry's old stuff off the menu. Can we get a refund? I'm not looking forward to talking to Henry. But I'll take care of it. A lot of famous people visit. I really... Weston needs to get his brother focused on food production. Something happened to Henry's beer? That's terrible. So terrible. But I'm sure I know nothing about it. Here's some credits for delivering the news. I expect that's the last I'll be seeing of you. Captain, I am fully updated and ready to assist with tasks. So, the unity awaits. I am not as afraid as I thought I would be. Stepping away from the world you know can lead to a better place. Constellation has given me a home, and I will always be grateful. 
but I also feel ready. Do you think we will see each other after the unity? Will we even recognize each other if we do? I do too. But the emissary makes me doubtful. They are both the person we lost and someone else entirely. If we do not see each other again, then this is goodbye. I am proud that I was present for this journey. Hey, Andresia. I hope all is well with you. Your investigation with the Freestar Rangers has come to an end. Are you satisfied with the results? I suppose not. This Ron Hope, supposedly a man of the people, was more concerned with profit than lives. He was not the first, and certainly will not be the last. At least he will no longer be able to prey on others. I am unsure that death was preferable to justice, but at least the situation is over. And there is no question who was to blame. No, he did not. A very poor decision on his part. Perhaps a lesson to be learned by others who would break the law. At least while you serve as ranger. I think less of the badge and more of the person wearing it. But you should be proud of your accomplishments. Shall we find some other adventure to occupy us now? If you are free soon, could we talk? I suppose now you can add climbing the corporate ladder to your list of accomplishments. I think it is perhaps for the best that the research program will come to an end. Where that neuroamp technology could lead, there are many bad outcomes. Too many. Already there has been too much conflict between corporations vying for this technology. First Infinity, then Ryujin. Who knows what might be next? You presume it had not already? Interesting. You know the people behind Ryujin better than I, but I am not convinced they could be trusted. The project will be shelved, they call it. As I said, too many other bad outcomes. This is for the best. With the NeuroAmp matter settled, we should move on to other things, yes? In the end, you chose the UC over the Crimson Fleet. Do you believe that was the right choice? I can respect that. I am no supporter of the United Colonies, but I also could not bring myself to side with the fleet and what they represent. Did getting that close to Delgado and the fleet make it difficult at all? It can be harder to act against someone once you get to know them. Nor do I think you should be, but in this case I believe you made the right call. They were pirates after all. It would be foolish to think, though, that we have seen the last of the Crimson Fleet. We may have eliminated the leadership, but there are many more pirates out there. That is true. Life has not suddenly been made easier for everyone, despite our recent victory. For now, you should enjoy your hard-earned victory. You have done a service for all of the settled systems. I would like a chance to talk to you, if you are able. It is a relief to know that the Terramorphs are being dealt with. But are you sure this Asilis creature is the right way to do it? Where Terramorphs are concerned, I do not believe there is a way to remove risk from the equation. Perhaps an experimental microbe has its own risks, but what of the risks to who knows how many human lives until the Asilis can do its job? 
I appreciate your conviction. I suppose time will tell. And I must say, I find it curious that you would agree keeping the Lazarus plant around is a good idea. It seems an additional unnecessary risk. But you could have changed their minds. They would have listened to you. At least the Freestar Collective will also know of its existence. Otherwise, I worry it would be too tempting for the UC to use as a weapon. Well, it is good to know that this particular threat is behind us. And you have done a service to all who live in the settled systems. Now that you have all the artifacts, we should talk. So this is it. This armillary can finally be assembled, and the Starborn assure that something will happen on the other side. Something that will make us like them. Funny. I thought after all this time I'd be screaming in excitement to jump into the unknown, but I feel like I'm hesitating. I know that, and believe me, I feel it. The destiny of it all. But after that, what happens? Say we go to the Unity, become Starborn, enter another universe. Will there even be a constellation there? It won't be ours, even if it is. I really turned you into a true believer, didn't I? Oh, what have I done? <sighs> All right, let's get back to it. One more jump into the unknown. There's something I need to talk to you about. Ron Hope was a real piece of work, wasn't he? Despicable is too kind a word. He held innocent people with little regard, treating their lives like numbers on a balance sheet. It's an absolute disgrace. Ah, <sighs> I'm relieved to hear you say that. Letting him off the hook would have been a terrible injustice. Had you taken the money, this would have been a very different conversation. I'm proud of you. It took a lot of integrity to say no to that offer. No, it certainly isn't. Especially when it comes at the expense of human lives. Well, I think I've lectured you enough. Thanks for taking the time to listen to me. Handling those tricky decisions regarding Ryujin must have been difficult. In fact, I'm amazed you were able to deal with them at all. Those types of corporations remind me why I never ventured into business. I can't stand that way of life. I suppose you've proven that point already at Ryujin. After all, Based on your recommendation, they've ceased their work on that disturbing NeuroAmp technology. Why wouldn't I be pleased about your decision? Can you imagine if that technology had fallen into the wrong hands? The awful things you could force people to do. Oh, it's terribly frightening. Yes, quite. <laughs> well, I've certainly taken up enough of your time. Thanks for letting me get that off my mind. There's something I need to talk to you about. Sorry to pull you aside like this, but I wanted to take a moment to congratulate you. Taking those steps to eradicate the Terramorph threat is essential to the safety of every living thing in the settled systems. You should be proud. 
Yes, exactly. I'm glad you treated the situation with the urgency it deserved. I only wish that the United Colonies chose to exterminate the Terramorphs with the experimental microbe instead of choosing this ridiculous Asili solution. Apparently, their decision was based on your recommendation. <sighs> that was a risky choice you've made. Minimal risk, are you sure? The Asili solution might take years, perhaps even decades, Meanwhile, the clock is ticking for humankind. That sounds far too risky to me. Well, I'm disappointed that you didn't trust the science. Unfortunately, locking away the Lazarus plant instead of eliminating it adds to the risk. Anything that accelerates the Terramorph life cycle should have been completely removed from the equation. Why take the chance? Of course, I wouldn't have it any other way. I appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to listen to my opinion on the matter. I'm sorry if I've said anything that jeopardizes our working relationship. Thanks for giving me a moment of your time. I promise this won't take long. I thought you deserved to know how proud I am that you chose to side with the United Colonies and put an end to the Crimson Fleet. You've almost single-handedly saved the settled systems from one of its most dangerous enemies. I can't possibly commend you highly enough. Uh, well, I'm not sure I deserve that, but I appreciate it all the same. What I want to know is what motivated you into making the right decision. You had Crix's legacy in hand, and you could have easily taken it to the key. Instead, you flew it to the Vigilance. Yes, that would have been unfortunate. The Crimson Fleet would have had enough wealth to fund their operation for decades. So, no regrets betraying Delgado then. I imagine you and he formed quite a partnership right up until the end. Agreed. With Delgado safely tucked away in a UC prison, things will certainly be quieter in the spaceways for a while. I suppose my final concern is how long this newfound peace will last. Given the fact that Navamora was never captured or killed, I couldn't agree more. My hope is that she was smart and went into permanent exile. I suppose only time will tell. Oh. Well, it appears I've soured the mood of our lovely conversation. I trust my mindless prattle hasn't been too much of a bother. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to listen. Remember our last conversation when you told me the artifacts made your mind and body feel out of sync? Well, it got me thinking. So I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Aja just started flooding back. Ah, oh, she absolutely was. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation and took me under her wing as her protege. Hey. So I pinched a few ideas from my old boss. <laughs> Can you blame me? At any rate, we logged quite a few discoveries together, but it was the actual journey that I cherished the most. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend 
while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of cozy isolation the best way to really get to know someone. At this point, I'd say you've graduated from protege and moved up the ladder. A bit. You know, all this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I miss her dearly. I respected her, and I considered her a dear friend, but we weren't in love. Had that been true, I would have resigned my post and moved to Parima 2 instead of remaining at Constellation. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit and I could make proper introductions. Well, I don't expect you to be a carbon copy of Aja. Just be yourself. You see, it's clear that we share the same hunger to discover what's out there. And that, well, that's what intrigues me about you. Good. Then we're both on the same page. Anyway, that's all I had to discuss for now. So if you'd point the way, we can continue our journey. Forgot to check the math on a few equations. The brain's long gone. Finally! These new universes won't know what hit them. Forget about the Starborn and the Hunter. It's Barrett and company from here on out. I suppose we can do that. Classic. Look, if this is the are we doing this or not talk, then stop right there. We're doing this. The multiverse waits for no one. Yeah, that's why I said it first. See you on the other side. Dusty. Dusty. Let's talk. This is amazing. The, the, the unity. The multiverse? This is everything, and more, literally. No kidding. Think of the dissertations. Boundless topics, no bounds. Except the books, they're bound. This explains so much, though. They're disorganized, petty, weird, and also deeply fascinating at the same time. Because they are just people. We never rule that out, but it feels so good to know we weren't fighting against robot alien ghost gods or something. True. We need to approach this critically and carefully. We can't just jump in. Or... Uh, I, I mean, we could, I guess. But it all comes back to this. We don't know what will happen if you enter the Unity. You might lose yourself, or become a two-headed space shark. There are too many variables. What? No. I just have to go back and forth about it for a while first, and then I'll be completely fine. Just part of my process. Of course, at the end of the day, it's your choice. But I will say this. Our entire purpose in Constellation is to explore. Why would we stop now? I'm with you. I'm not going to hold you back. But if you, you know, become evil or whatever, I'm also not going to have your back. Anytime. The possibility of turning evil aside? <laughs> I appreciate you taking the lead on this. You're guiding Constellation to new frontiers, new discoveries, and we should all follow your example. Uh... On that note, there's something else I'd like to discuss with you, if you have time. 
It's not on the scale of entering the unity, but it is tangentially related. Thanks. <laughs> this has been swirling in my brain goo for a while now. So, I've been pondering over what's happened and what it all means. And I've got a favor to ask. A teensy-weensy favor. About the size of a plank length, really. I think it's time I joined you in the physics bending powers business. <laughs> See if one of those temples works for more than just you. Marvelous. I'm glad you're as gung-ho about this as I am. As it so happens, I've already talked to Vladimir. Seems our eye in the sky is back up and running. He's sent me the coordinates for the temple already. We just have to visit. Neon. you think it would be peaceful with all those calm waters and beautiful sunsets. But I can't think of any town that's more stressful. Reusion. Infinity LTD. And there you were, navigating corporate bureaucracy like a professional. Humanity went to the stars and explored new worlds. And some still ended up sitting at desk all day long. Not sure if I should laugh or cry. Look, I know Neon is going to be Neon, no matter what any of us do about it. But I'm glad you put a stop to that neural amp tech. Nothing good was going to come from that. They could control groups, armies. They could have become a military power. I guess we'll find out if we can trust them if you suddenly start coming after all of us, huh? I guess we'll find out. Anyway, not that I care a ton about the internal politics of some ethically dubious megacorp, but... So, Masako, huh? I mean, between her and Ularu Chen, I get it, but... You don't trust her, do you? Sometimes the least worst option is all we can get. Anyway, you didn't happen to pick up any investment tips while you were in there. Just kidding. I don't even want to know. Dusty. Dusty. Let's talk. Space is so hostile to humanity already. And you made it just a little bit safer for everybody. No matter what you could have done differently, this will impact a lot of lives eventually. We'll have to mark it in the Constellation history books so we don't forget it when the Turimarfs are finally gone. Oh, really? I haven't noticed anything. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. You're amazing. Like chocolate-covered prasada berries on an all-you-can-eat spicy chunks buffet. Ah, sorry, I'm a little hungry. Balancing risk versus reward is tricky. Even more so when so much hangs in the balance. So, you really think the Asilis are going to work out, huh? You must have seen some data that I didn't. Everything has a chance to mutate, and most mutations are harmless. But I get it. It's scary. It's definitely riskier than dropping off some wild animals. Oh well, it's done. By sealing the Lazarus plant away instead of destroying it, I'm worried we'd made things riskier. Maybe we could study it. Fair. But it will take a long time to get any actionable results. Well, if it isn't our own ranger, <laughs> I hope you're not taking the job permanently. A badge is just a symbol, a, a, a promise, a hope. You don't have to wear the object to be true to those goals. Anyway, I'm just glad Ron Hope is gone. Those farmers are gone, but you prevented the next group of people from suffering. It was a hard choice that you made, but I'm proud of you, Captain. Let's talk. 
When you have time, of course. I can't imagine how hard it was to be under all that pressure. A leader knows that protecting regular folk is not just a responsibility, but a privilege. And I'm proud to call you my captain. Modest, too. They're gonna make a statue out of you, or carve your face on a moon or something. <laughs> what you did took nerves. Befriending Delgado like that, it was a huge risk. If he had gotten to you, convinced you to side with them, I don't know what we'd be dealing with right now. Look, I get what you're saying, but you saw an opportunity and you took it. It was his weakness, not yours. And if they regroup after all this, they'll be weaker next time. All thanks to you. Maybe, maybe not. But one thing's for certain, things could have been a whole heck of a lot worse right now. And it's okay to feel good about that. Times like this when it feels like things have really pushed the boundaries of humanity, you know? This is Barrett, returning your call. What in the... Who in the... Whoa. Hello, handsome. You've got to be joking. Nope. Okay. Skipping the initial shock of it all. Agreed. Not worth it. Forming a hypothesis. Hmm. Molecular binary schism? Temporal twinning? Group hallucination? Don't forget the fluctuations in the energy patterns which align almost deterministically. 
harmonize vibrations, distorting some mechanical barrier between neighboring universes? Impossible to know with such a minute subset of readings. We need more data. Obviously. Obviously. Whoa there. Sustaining this connection requires a lot of concentration. Is this permanent? You will eventually monitor the energy fluctuations and agree. But no, this is unusual. I could study this forever. Irvin told me to just enjoy it and collect data on the side for later. And I'm glad I did. Irvin? He's with you. He's... okay? By the tone of your voice, I'm gathering some things in our lives might be a bit different. Is he... is he happy? Yes, he is. Our daughter pilots the ship after Vasco was destroyed. But otherwise, we've survived the war well. Going on 20 years now. But we're starting to turn the tide. Imagine all of the variations. It's endless. Amazing. Sounds like you don't have a daughter here, I take it. No, we talked about it, but no. We named her after Aja, my mentor. She died in the crossfire between the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective decades ago. For me? Irvin died instead of Aja in that crossfire. She's best friends with Cora, and she's smart as hell. <laughs> of course she is. Oh man. I only hope the new one we're building is just as salty as the last one. My husband? He passed 20 years ago. It's been so long. The horror of the infinite is the inclusion of the unimaginable. I promise. He's happy. We're happy. I have so many questions. I wonder how many paths I've taken. We've taken. How many variations. How many ended with heartache and how many with joy. I think about that all the time. Wait. What's that noise? Starborn ship. We can handle this. On it. Take a break. Let's chat. every moment with them. I already do, my friend. I promise. So look, for the record, I am the same Barrett that came here with you. For sure. I think. Isn't it? I mean, hey, at least only one other Barrett appeared. Imagine if an army of, uh, me showed up. Besides, it is a bit exhausting to sustain just one extra me. Anyway, it's a relief, you know. I have this ability, this power. And I'm still just... me. Just regular Barrett. And they already feel like it's subsiding. I no longer feel like I'm in a huge crowd. I thought so, too. Other me? Other Barrett? Seemed like he was able to handle himself well in that fight. Anyway, we'll see. 
If the other me gets in the way, I can just release him or stop using the power entirely. For now, I just need to use this power a bit and digest what all has happened. That's pretty exhausting, really. So I might only do it when I feel like we could use backup. For now, anyway. A while ago, you helped me out when I was captured by the Crimson Fleet. And I just wanted to say thanks for having my back. It's good to be part of a team, isn't it? To be part of something so much bigger than any one of us. So many things can go wrong out there. Working with people you can trust is important. And that's why I've been in Constellation so long. It's good to have people who will help out when you're in a jam. You know, I doubt many people like that. That's fair. I can respect that. I hope I can earn your trust. But if not, well, I can still work with that. Speaking of which, Captain, I cannot even begin to fathom what Constellation would be like without you. Just figured I'd mention it, since we haven't had much time to chat before. You know, being a member of Constellation has given me a lot of opportunities, and a fair bit of stress, I'll admit. It's hard to imagine just who I'd be had I never joined up. I would have never done so many things, met so many people. It's mind-boggling how different I would be. And I never would have met Irvin. Or lost him. I suppose. That's right. We can't know the consequences of the choices we never made, and anything beyond that is imagination alone. But for the choices we made, it feels just a bit closer, doesn't it? Irvin's been gone for over 20 years. Strange how memories can pop up when you least expect it. Yeah, don't worry. Logically, I know I should be over it. But I'm not, and it's gotten worse lately. I've ignored my feelings about Irvin's death since it happened. It's time for me to confront it. I'm just fortunate that Constellation has been a supporting home for me since Irvin died. I mean, where else would I get to dodge space pirates and discover new planets? On that note, I think I'd do well to distract myself with a little adventure for a bit. leave some food out before we left? Whoa! place is a delightful relic tangled up with hope, grit, and science. Mm -hmm. Do you need something? Good thinking. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Oh, sore. Lucky I noticed the pattern in one...
Hello there, Vasco. Greetings, Walter Stroud. The majority of citizens here in New Atlantis count on Reliant Medical. I believe our reputation speaks for itself. Well, judging by the looks of you, you're in need of some medical attention. We can certainly help. How can I help? My goodness, you're in quite a state. Let's get these wounds closed up and get you on the road to recovery. We'll get you feeling better in no time. There you are. Right is rain. Take care of yourself.
I don't want to hear any complaints. As there was a time when literal music to my ears. Renee's drawings. Pretty cool. Hey, you're back! Oh, I hope you got... Oh, thanks. Here's some money. Oh, God. Oh, this means a lot. <laughs> we really took it to those pirate bastards. That shield upgrade we got on the Vigilance made a big difference. The uh, mission board should provide you with any intel. Well done. Let's see what you found. The fleet's planning a raid on Hopetown? Okay. I didn't expect them to be so bold, but I suppose desperate times call for desperate measures. Don't worry. I'll circulate a description of this captain to the authorities on Hopetown and make sure they never set foot in that settlement. That it? Understood. Keep searching and you're bound to find more. We'll be here if you need us.
Now that the fleet's done, I wonder where Mass will send the big ones next. Takes a brave soldier to do what you did. I might do a tour of the Keens. Hmm. Glad to hear it. A hot tip, huh? What kind of idiot would dig in their heels waiting for a massive payout on some of the cheapest food in the settled systems? I've seen some strange things on this assignment, but this definitely tops the list. I'll uh pass it on to my superiors. I'm sure they'll get right on it. According to my superiors at Mast? We've provided them enough data to wrap up this portion of the operation and call it a success. You've brought us a mountain of evidence against the Crimson Fleet and uncovered some unexpected criminal activity. You've done a hell of a job. Oh? Well, I see we've rubbed up on you more than I expected. Anyway, here. I wanted to give you this. It isn't from Commander Akande or the UC. It's from me. It was my sidearm when I ran with the Crimson Fleet. Something special I paid a hell of a lot of money for. Now it's yours. You're very welcome. <clears throat> All right, enough of this mushy nonsense. Time to get back to work. Sorry, got one. I'd go into. Yes. Thank you. 
I don't want to hear any complaints. Yes. As vital, delightful. something for you. <sighs> oh, God. I appreciate it. I I'll be sure to make it up to you. I don't want to hear any complaints. And as vital, excellent. When I get older, I'm gonna work in the mines, like my dad did. So I can save up and buy my mom a house somewhere nice. Oh, you're, uh, back cause you found- Nice! <laughs> Thanks again! This taken, baby? Oh, God! Oh, this means a lot to me. <laughs>
cabinets of some kind of Something to report? About damn time. Extermination work. You ready to head out right? Let's get to the detail. Get you those cor- I don't want to hear any complaints. Okay. Hello. As vital, literal me. I'm a senior around here. Oh, you're uh, back because you found the next book? Oh, thanks. A Here's some money. This is taking things, Dave. Oh, God. Oh, thanks. 